So, Ian, we were just off mic talking about the Fast and Furious franchise. Now, I, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> Which other film franchise do you think the Fast franchise should cross over with? Does Naruto count as a film franchise? No. Oh. It has to be, I, I'd say it has to be like a live action film franchise. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. I was gonna say because, and I just I don't it. want it to be Transformers. Is that but what Transformers trying- fits so well? No, it doesn't. It's because they're both cars. Yeah. No cars. When you remove the car, fine oh. cars. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The film series cars. It, everything looks realistic. Still, it's just that Vin Diesel gets is in the driving car Lightning and, McQueen, and it's oh, fuck Owen Wilson. Is that Lightning fucking, McQueen. That's like, look, yeah, yeah. It, it's just he gets in like a red fucking I don't know Miata. I don't know what the fuck it's Lightning McQueen's supposed to be. I don't know some kind of race NASCAR car, sportsy looking car. Uh, and then and then and Ludacris, then Ludacris, Ludacris has to drive in Mater, and then like he's like, man, what the fuck? No, is no, this? no. Tyrese has to drive Mater. Sure, because they're both the ones who talk way too much and are honestly stupider than everyone else in the cast. Yeah. But, like, Tyrese would hate Mater. He'd be like, this fucking lame ass He would hate him, but then by the end he would love him. Yeah. Just like Fast and the Furious 2, where he hated Brian, and then by the end he loved him. Man, I don't want to drive this old hunk of junk. Fuck. Your impression is very bad because I've you have never seen him You don't know what they film. sound like. I was just... <laughs> Ludacris has to drive... I was just talking like every single character in the movie. Did you see Cars 3? Uh, no, I've not seen cars. There's like a younger female car Mm -hmm. who becomes like Lightning McQueen after he properly retires. Like he become, did you see Cars 1? I've seen Cars 1 You know, and I've seen Cars 2. Doc Hudson or whatever? Yes, I do know. Yeah, Doc Hudson, you know how he was like his, he's old, his coach at the end of the movie where he's like, teach it, tell him how to go through. Lightning McQueen becomes Doc Hudson. I heard Cars 3 is an actual good movie. It's okay. It's just kind of stupid. It's about like this get about him being like this old dude who's Cuz Cars 1 and 2 game. are both not movies. Like like they're bad. I think Cars 1's all right. I didn't see Cars 2 because okay, Cars watched, 2 is the worst. I watched Cars 1 and 3 back to back when I was in Ohio. <laughs> because they like to watch movies there. So we watched Cars 1, Cars 3 and then Rogue One. Oh, I hated one of those movies. <laughs> I think Rogue One's a better movie than Cars 1. <gasps> Star Wars and Fast and the Furious. Yeah. It's in a galaxy far, uh, uh, far, far away at a long time ago, whatever the fuck. But Vin just Diesel a, it's is just now... A por- I mean, Vin here's Diesel what you do. You just Jedi. do a portal. Vin Diesel is now a Jedi, and he fucking uses the Force to shift the gears in his car. <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, hey everybody, welcome to the Media Hole Podcast, is a weekly podcast in which me and my good friend Ian like to talk about movies and news and video games and comic books and all sorts of shit. Yeah. Uh, I hope you're settled in for a fun app. <laughs> I think that's the best cold open we've done. Maybe it all well, because it was just you were like because it was fully prompted. And then I, was I was like, like Fast and, then, and the Furious. You're like, number one. That I was like, hold on. Because I came up, I was like halfway through asking him the question of which film series Fast and Furious should cross over with. Uh, and then I was like, wait a second, this is podcast material. <laughs> it's quality, baby. It's not something we want to repeat. All right. Um, Can we just open up with dunking on Stadia, man, though? Oh, yeah. let's. That was on the list, certainly. Yeah, I just, I kind of wanted to start with it. Sure. Uh, Google Stadia creator, creative director says dumb shit. He changed his uh, his bio after that. To GS... <laughs> to G- SNG Entertainment or something. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, something like that. Like, Studio Game and Entertainment or whatever. Yeah. Um, the, if it's Casey Stadia know- Games and Entertainment. Yeah. Stadia. It's still Stadia, yeah. but it's like... I don't know if he's a creative director or if Well, he, he still says he's a creative director at S G E yeah. or whatever it is. Um Oh, and this also all came up because um Twitch decided, hey, we don't have Mixer to compete with anymore. Let's just allow record labels to come in and ruin the careers of thousands of streamers. Yeah, it's really fucked up the content ID. And then he tweets Because especially that's the problem with YouTube is all the DMCA takedown stuff. And also someone made uh, someone just I think they were making a comparison about their YouTube and this shit with DMCA stuff is yeah. they used five seconds of like a DSP clip in one of their videos yeah and DSP claimed it 
and like you, force them to take down the video. Yeah, like the the thing is, is like, you know, the the man certainly did tweet something stupid that was saying that on top of that they should have to pay for music that they should have to license to use I games have the, i have the tweet here you have the actual tweet yeah oh, so it started with streamers worried about getting their content pu- call content pulled because they use music they didn't pay for should be more worried by the fact that they're streaming games they didn't pay for as well it's all gone as soon as publishers decide to enforce it and now number one right here this is where he was like already like clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. They usually do pay for their games. I have, I don't think I have a game that I've played that I haven't paid for. Like, I guess people who play Fortnite and me with, like, Genshin Impact. Like, yeah, but those are free games. Those are free games that have microtransactions and go eat shit. Also, where am I streaming this music from? Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm streaming from Spotify, guess what, motherfucker? I did pay for it. <laughs> but even still, like... In, like, a shitty, smaller, we're ruining the music industry way... Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is, like, the music thing, you can make arguments for. If it's music in a game, that fucking sucks. You should be, like, totally chill with, like, part of having music be in a game means you should be, you should either have a mode that is copyright friendly, like Life is Strange does, yeah, or you should have a mode that, or you should have it where they're already licensed, like they did with Death Stranding, where it's like, you can stream all of Death Stranding, you're not going to get copyright claims I think the, because you're allowed. I think the shittiest part about uh, music stuff with that is that, um... It's not up to the artist if they have a label. Mm-hmm. Like I was watching um, this uh, one YouTuber, Noel Miller. Yeah, I, I, I caught one of his streams because he got like engaged. Yeah, so I was like checking out like what he's saying and shit. And he also released a new song recently, like him and Cody Ko as Tiny Meat Gang. Yeah, and some guy was like, "I'm making like a Valorant montage, and I like I really like this song. Can I use it?" And he just straight up was like, "I have no issue with it, but that's the record label's deal." It's like that sucks that you can't you created the music but you sold it to a record label. I keep getting those stupid Cody Co ads when I listen to podcasts. Cody Co ads? Yeah, he uh he's on some kind of like podcast sponsored by some kind of condom manufacturer uh that he's getting paid a bunch of money to do and there's a bunch of ads for them. I haven't listened to Tiny Meat Gang in a couple weeks. Is it's it not one? it's not that one. It's a it's an extra one. I don't know what it's called, but I'm also not here to promote it because I haven't listened to it, so I don't know what it, if it's any yeah. good. I also, just keep getting ri- the ad Also, Cody Co, you're rich enough. We don't yeah. need that. You bought a fucking two point three million dollar house. Buy an ad fucking spot on our <laughs> podcast to have your podcast. I do enjoy your content. While I'm <laughs> while I'm complaining about ads for your podcast, pay money to put that ad in ours. <laughs> All right. So the second part of uh, this tweet by. Uh, at his name's Alex Hutchinson. Mm-hmm. It said the real truth is the streamers should be paying the developers and publishers of the game they stream. They should be buying a license like any real business and paying for the content they use. I when I buy a game, I'm buying the license. Yeah, th- but the problem is with digital media, you are now only buying licenses, buddy. Yeah, that's the problem with digital media. You can't change it at all. You have to use it the way they want you to, and so like. You know, fucking, and and a stream or something, or a let's play or whatever is inherently transformative, because if I don't fucking touch the controller and my version of playing that game is gonna be different, yeah. it's a transformative piece of content. It'd be different if I was fucking streaming me watching a movie and trying to make money off of it, because I'm not changing the movie. Yeah. Didn't you? Did you read that from somewhere? <laughs> no, I'm just smart. No, okay, okay. Well, don't blow yourself so hard; you might break <laughs> your fucking neck. But I, there was a guy who said a similar thing. I think DSP put out like an actually good take. Actually, yeah, I think that it was DSP. There was another guy who is like a game developer, and I was watching um, Vine Sauce play Among Us, but they were playing like VR Chat Among Us. Oh shit! I want to watch that. It was pretty good, but he got <laughs> fucked over all the time. Like they kept killing him. <laughs> He was playing with, like, Rubber Ross. Yeah. And do you know who Nogla is? I have no idea. He's another YouTuber. He's also very big. But, like, Nogla was, and him were the green ones. Mm-hmm. And Nogla was like, yeah, me and you, a green gang. And then, like, Vinny would be like, fuck yeah. And then, like, they would, uh, they'd be left alone for a second and Nogla would kill him every time. <laughs> I think Vinny spent most of that <laughs> that game sitting in the fucking, um, in, like, the room, like, watching other people play. Um, Yeah, so... He talked about it, and he was talking about a game where he put, like, some indie developer game he played. Mm-hmm. Where And I saw that guy 
Fucking I wish I remembered. I wish I screenshot it because I screenshotted yeah. some stuff. Um, Saying like, yeah, streaming isn't the death of a video game. Fortnite's famous because of video uh, streamers. Mm-hmm. Like Fortnite, yeah, it's a big deal. Well, streaming is a form of advertising. Yeah. There's a lot of games that get streamed that get popular. Fucking Among Us. Among Us. Yeah. That actually, I actually saw one of, like an Among Us clip like a long time ago. Among Us and came I, out in 2018, and then they put out two new maps in 2020, and suddenly it's, people started streaming it because there was new content added, and then it popped the fuck off. It was the, there was a guy named like Knife or something, something like that. He he was playing like in 2019. I saw one of his clips all the way back then. I'm like, that game looks fun. There's no way I'll convince all my friends to get it. And then like in the middle, like. Towards, September 2020. In September, Soda Poppin' did, like, a stream of Among Us. And then immediately, like, Ross started playing it. Critical started playing Beauty it. PewDiePie. Alpha Rat. That corpse guy who's now getting very popular. Because he's got the fucking sexiest voice in the world. <laughs> I'm corpse. He's younger than us. He is, yeah. I he's, think like, he's, 22. I think he's from Toronto. Oh. I was listening. Yo, corpse. <laughs> Come collab, bro. I, that's just the, that's a Get theory. Get out of here. That's a theory because I was listening to uh, his music. Yeah. Because he's just got that, like... Did he say Tuke instead of Beanie? No, he says, like, the six. And I'm like, uh, oh, only Toronto rappers yeah. flex that they're from this. Well, well, only people who live in the greater Toronto area. Yeah. <laughs> um. So anyways, Hard Drive immediately put out an article that says, opinion, it's time for gamers to unionize. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. they're the fastest motherfuckers in the world. I think they just already had that one and they repost them when they become relevant. Maybe. Like, they I are... think they reposted the... the... <laughs> <laughs> the uh, AOC grafts an ar- a machine gun to her arm, starts yelling about, can you hear the planet dying? <laughs> <laughs> when, um, <laughs> so this guy, I don't know who it is. His name's this thing's Video Game Ator- Attorney and his handles Morrison. He's verified, but I have no yeah. idea who this is. I think I've, I've seen this person tweet things before. Yeah, and it says, he replies to Hutchinson, it says, Nah, well, publishers do own their games and control how they can be used. Most EULAs allow for streaming and most games have streaming policies that don't require a formal license. Bad legal vice is bad. Listen to lawyers, not people repeating stuff they read in AOL chat rooms. Uh, and I'd like to have one other thing, because in the replies, this uh, this Stadium Man, uh, who hates being called Stadium Man, by the way, uh, Stadium Man had, had this to say uh, in regards to, like, you know, art and transformation. Uh, he said, quote, uh, art is what you call pop culture that does not make money. Yeah. Which, actually, I typed up a tweet with too many fucking characters of just, like, eat shit, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> the man who worked on Assassin's Creed 3 gets to tell people what art is. You know, like, I eat a, shit, you piece of garbage. I have a thing about, about his work on Assassin's Creed as well. He was the creative director of the worst Assassin's Creed. And the worst Far Cry. Okay, so once just one more thing. I got two more things, actually, about this guy. Then we can move on. All right. So... He did, like, an opinion piece, or I guess... Yeah, or it was a thing. He says, I'll take Gears of War over Bayonetta anytime. Oh, what a dumb! You're just wrong! Also, he just says, Alex Hutchinson, game journalists exhibit subtle racism. Game journalists... To what? Gears of War is the whitest game in the world! No, because they're racist for Japanese people, because their games have such garbage stories and are bad. Some of them, Yeah. But it's like, that's not what it... But also, Gears of War doesn't have a stellar story. Yeah. It has, like, the right moments that make you go, oh, like, if you care. And Gears, and Gears of War, of... even if you like Gears of War, it started the trend of games being super gray and brown that lasted throughout the Xbox 360. Yeah. Which is ultimately bad for also, art Also, cover-based third-person shooters. Yeah. I mean, like, well, that was kind of done, it was like, on 10 its, years it, before. It was but coming it on, but Gears it. of War did it so well. That yeah. everyone's like, ooh, I'm surprised Assassin's Creed didn't have a cover-based third-person shooter. I think one of them had, like... They had cover... Multiplayer. Yeah, but it wasn't shooting. It was still a... Sat- All of them had... Mul- a bunch of them had multiplayer. No, but I think one Brotherhood of them had, onwards. like, a, a cover-based multiplayer, didn't it? Oh, wait, hold on. Co- cover-based shooter Assassin's Creed, that's just Watch Dogs 1. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, I mean, it's open world, so it's a slightly more interesting, but still, it's Watch Dogs. Yeah, and then... And uh, he was the guy who said women hard to animate. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was him? Yeah. This guy's the dumbest motherfucker on the planet. 
So, uh, to clarify, the initial Women Hard to Animate comment came from UnAlex at AC Unity, but had an assist from Stadia Guy the next day. Thank you, Jason Schreier, for pointing that out. I feel like Jason Schreier is either like, everyone's dunking on him or going, thank you for your journalism. No, because his journalism's great, but he's an asshole. Oh, uh, yeah. He was, uh, oh, yeah, he was like, he was Kotaku man, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and everyone was like, fuck you, thank God Kotaku's going down. Please, like, solo still do your well, work. Well, there's nothing... No, no, no. Uh, there's... Uh, Kotaku is fine. The problem with Schreier is that, like, his... He gets all these great scoops, and he's, like, kind of famous for them. But the second anybody tries to also report on stuff or double-check his work, he treats them like assholes. Uh, and, like, tries to blacklist people. And he's working for Bloomberg now. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a part of shitty. Bloomberg's uh, d gaming... Because Bloomberg is like Bloomberg News or whatever. It's like yeah, their it's a business, publication. Their business publication. Like um, even Forbes has a fucking gaming section. Yeah, oh, Forbes's gaming section is actually pretty good. Yeah, I got a lot of my Destiny Two news from them because for some reason, you know, you open up Google Chrome, you open up a new tab, and it's just like yeah. here's the news at the bottom, and it's like all the time, it's like what's going on in this week in Destiny? It's literally right there. <laughs> The Des I keep the seeing eight Destiny, Destiny 2 is to watch with Beyond Light sandbox changes by Forbes. <laughs> yeah, they get good scoops at Forbes. They just have, like, when they write about something, they're actually being informative, unlike yeah. Screen Rant, ComicBook.com, and oh, all those other websites where they're just like, this thing, the t yeah. <laughs> the, we're, we're hiding I, the lead in the title, well, and you literally don't need anything I else. Love, I love ComicBook.com when it's, um like, top ten things. And it's like it's simultaneously milk toast, and nobody has that opinion. Yeah, like it's like I like I thought. Okay, I saw something where it was like Black Widow breaks fans' hearts, and I'm like, all right, I you I'm curious about this one. Maybe she said I didn't even know I was in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, <laughs> <laughs> like Gwyneth Paltrow, where she was like, I didn't know I, didn't I was know in which Spider -Man. movies I was in. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, Spotty. specifically with Spider-Man was the she popular didn't, one. She forgot she was in Spider-Man Homecoming. They were, she was, like, cooking with... Well, she's just at the end. Yeah, but she was cooking... The clip where people found out that she didn't know was because yeah. she was cooking with Jon Favreau on The Chef Show. Yeah. And she, he was just like, yeah, we did this on Spider-Man. She's like, I wasn't in Spider-Man. <laughs> she did that twice because she said the same thing on the Grant, Graham Norton show. Yeah, I, it's... Um, I think she just didn't realize both times <laughs> they were talking about that, mo that, that movie, like... Graham Norton show is great though. Yeah, it's the only good talk show. Yes. Yeah. We need to. We need British panel shows to like make their way over here. Well, it's like I think we just. So I feel like James Corden tried to do that. James Corden is trash and not funny at all. Yeah, but I think we just need. What do the British have? They have everybody out at once. They got you can say all the swear words you want. Well, they like introduce them one at a time. He'll talk to yeah. them for like a whole minute and then be like, now we'll get back to you. But everybody can react. Yeah. And they and they get to just be R rated as well. So it's like bam bam. Because the weird thing about Britain, hyper violence on TV is not allowed. Yeah. You can pretty much if someone fires a gun, rated R. Yeah. But if uh, if someone can call you a fucking piece of shit, ugly fucking cunt, and they'll be like, ha. E for everyone. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. PG. Well, and if you go to like places like um, France and Italy and like, you know, part of part the parts of cool Europe, you can just see advertisements on bus buses with nudity. Or what was that one fucking Latin lover? That fucking show that was on the whatever the Spanish network here. Yeah. Where like. You're up at 2 a.m. or whatever fuck. You like woke up in the mm -hmm. middle of the night. You're like, I don't know. I'll just roll over in bed, watch TV. I don't know if you had a TV with cable in your room when you were younger. I didn't. I did at my dad's. I would like wake up and be like, scroll through. And I'm like, YTV, obviously. YTV was an infomercial zone. Fucking Cartoon Network. No, not Cartoon Network. Teletoon was in garbage mode. Fucking the comedy channel was pure just for laughs, laughs gags. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even like this. Just for laughs gags is the worst. It's like the first time you see it's like I just want to see it's 30 funny different when you're like eight. gags. Like it's funny when you're eight, but like when you're ten or whatever. It's like I don't want I don't need to see thirty different reactions. Well it's just a prank show. Yeah. It's a prank show, but it's I love like how they so try to mild. disguise that it's in fucking Quebec. This is Montreal, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, you can see, like, everybody's French, but they don't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's such um, a weird vibe. Yeah, so if you went to, like, that channel... It was, like, channel 31 or something. No, that's A&E. 32. 
you could just get find like Latin Lover, and it was just straight up porn. Hell yeah. Well, it was like a it was a soap opera filmed in somewhere, probably Mexico. It's presumably yeah, it's one of those. It was Spanish, and they like fucked on it, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm like nine years old. <laughs> this is sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just let's change our TV standards. Well, yeah, I mean, if you I know, see a gun, I think it's like ew. If well, I see a pussy, ew as well. <laughs> But well, if I hear them like, say fuck, yeah, I think that's like shit's changing. Obviously, now that we're going to streaming and like anything can be fully X-rated now. Like every channel is HBO nowadays, man. Every channel wants to be HBO. Well, yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like Netflix shows, yeah. Uh, like HBO, like it's like HBO. You can say fuck. You can show nudity. You can have extreme violence. You can do whatever you want because really you have want to pay to have violence. it. You can have it. Yeah, you can have it. You can have a little. <laughs> yeah, a little as a snack. Yeah. Oh, do you know what movie we have to watch, Ian? By oh. the way, uh, there's there's a movie series of Japanese films called High and Low that I've recently found out about, and they are are extreme action movies of like gangs of boy band looking dudes getting into extreme street fights that look sick. Yakuza. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, on Netflix, like you can do whatever. I mean, that's basically what House of Cards is showing. Hmm? They're old. I've been around for four or five years. Or are you t- looking at the old high oh, and low by high Kurosawa? Low by Kurosawa. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't see the other one. Just look, I think the first one's called like High and Low the movie because it's based on a TV show that we don't we can't watch. Yeah. Okay. Um, but all the movies just got added to Netflix, and there's oh, like six yeah, movies. Oh, sixteen. High and Low. Yeah. You know, be a good one. What? Fucking put the Yakuza man in there just for fun. Hell yeah. Toshiro Nagoshi just hanging out in the background going. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, but the the action looks sick in it. Yeah, for sure. So, anyways, um, Google Stadia is still fucking bad. But if you want to play Phoenix Immortals Rising or whatever the fuck they called that piece of shit, you can get an early demo on the Google Stadia. Uh, and now let's cut to an ad. This podcast is sponsored by the Google Stadia. <laughs> go to Stadia.com. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, go to Stadia.com. <laughs> I just picture like the the guy in charge of Stadia like looks at Twitter and it's like, oh, Stadia's trending. Oh, we're trending on Twitter. We're like number two trending on Twitter. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's a, a click. Did AOC oh, bring no. us up on a, on on her Among Us stream? What's going on here? <laughs> and then it's like, oh no. Yeah, speaking of, let's talk about AOC playing Among Us. That was awesome. Uh, I did not watch it because I was doing other things. I watched it. It was her, Pokemane, Hasanabi, Hasanabi, rather. Gus Johnson, H-Bomber guy, corpse husband, whatever. Corpse ja- husband. Jack Septicai, Ilhan Omar, other people. Robert Ross was there. No, not, not with her. What? I thought he was there. No, he wasn't. That's rude. How dare you have Gus Johnson but not Ross? Because Gus Johnson's way cooler. No. I love Gus. Not in terms of Among Us. I don't care about Among Us. These are people... I mean, Hassan Abi is fucking... He's like a political YouTuber. Okay. Uh, and same with H-Bomber guy. They had the, the other rep as well, didn't they? Hmm? The, yeah, yeah. Ilhan Omar was I, a... I thought it was said differently, so I was like, oh, this one. Uh, Yeah, they got over 400,000 concurrent viewers just on her channel. Like, over 500,000 total between all the channels. Yeah, it is um, the third highest Twitch stream ever. Following the Drake Ninja collab and some other thing I never heard about. Uh, Shroud's return to Twitch. I knew you'd know. I remember I saw it in the article, and then I closed the article to write the the thing in the fucking... In the doc, and I completely forgot. I was like, some guy. I also know because I saw, like, things. I saw some fucking blatant lie, though, on Facebook. What? Um... It was said like, uh, it was said, it said like, it was one of the highest viewed things on Twitch. And I'm like, just say third. Third is still impressive. Yeah. In and fact, then, third sounds better but than But then it one said half. it had 4.5 million views. And I'm like, that's no. not how that works. That, so that, that post, by the way, is an official post. And that's because the archives of it across the multiple platforms that archives were done yeah. had a combined over 4.5 million views. Okay. Yeah. The the post came out way too quickly. Yeah, because it was like by the next morning, all the archives and all the highlights had gotten like a combined fo- four. Okay, so million if they're including views, highlights, people views. will watch highlights multiple times, and yeah. some people will just send highlights and not watch the vod. I watched the highlights of of when H Bomber guy killed yeah. AOC a bunch of times because it's so funny. Apparently, he was like the only one willing to kill her. As yeah, because well. like for the first bunch <laughs> of games, it's like everybody was like too scared to kill them uh, or vote them off. 
yeah. most of the time. Uh, and then like, uh, and then like fucking H Bobber guy gets in one game, and then he's like, kills the AOC like immediately. And then she's like, after everything we've been through, because she was like immediately happy when he came on, because she was like, yeah, like, that was my first Switch stream when I came on when he was doing Donkey Kong. Mm. Uh, to say trans rights and shit. And it's like, fuck yeah, she remembered. <laughs> I thought they were like hanging out together like it was the buddy system thing and then yeah. he just killed he her just at the end. Gets her and yeah. then she's like, what? Um, so funny. I, you remember like, okay, so back when like she first got elected. Yeah. She, someone, she said she played like League of Legends or something. So, like someone asked yeah, if she, she was does. a gamer. And I was just like, in, in my Discord last night, I'm like, yeah, it's cool that she played Among Us, but I'd really like her to play um, League of Legends so she can start yelling racial slurs at other people. <laughs> <laughs> if you play League of Legends, you've probably said something racist. It's like yeah. you become PewDiePie on that bridge. Also, I saw a bunch of people fucking... Something st- edit, edit her. It's like, wow, I can't believe we have a gamer. And it's her over the phone. No, it's like of- AOC is about to have a gamer moment. <laughs> yeah. And it's like AOC uh, playing pub- like the same place where PewDiePie dropped the end bomb. This yeah. is really funny. Um, Damn, it would, I f- like, it would be hard to be in a game with PewDiePie and not go like, hey, man. <laughs> I Yeah. You'd probably not say that. <laughs> hey, PewDiePie, why don't you come on the podcast so we can scream at you for an hour? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. He seems like a nice enough guy. He's just uh-huh. very misinformed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he is a bit like if you literally maybe you should change up your entire comedy game. Yeah, if someone shoots up a mosque, but out right, but right before they record, they were recording themselves and said sub to PewDiePie. Yeah, like or it maybe. was a joke. PewDiePie's like, it's a joke. I was just trying to beat T series. Yeah, <laughs> and or it's like, well, or no, you're maybe to the you shouldn't. You also shouldn't if you're going to say that all your subscribers and the people who watch your content are kids. You maybe shouldn't have Ben Shapiro on your show. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he also had Elon Musk and Justin Roiland. I feel like... Well, no, I don't think anything's wrong with Justin Roiland necessarily. I don't think anything's wrong with Elon Musk when you're not paying attention to you him. You can have him... Like, having him on a show, whatever. It's annoying when he's in Iron Man 2, but I get it. I'd have <laughs> him on... It's also very jarring. <laughs> he yeah, just shows up. I'd have him on our show, but it would be pretty much the entire episode that we did where we where we read all the things that were bad about him, except he'd be in the room. Yeah. And the doors would lock. <laughs> hey, Elon, how does it feel that you're funding a... <laughs> A revolutionary coup in somewhere in South America so you can get more lithium, you piece of shit. A fascist coup. Or what's happening? Isn't there something fucked up happening in Nigeria right now? Uh, it's like a, Oh, the Nigeria thing is that they have us that there was the special uh, anti robbery squad, like of their police was all fucked up. I read something about some country in Africa where like forty eight women are raped every hour and like more than like a million people are just dead. Yeah, there's a lot of bad shit going on, for yeah. sure. And it's all... I spent some time this week talking to the fucking white dudes at my work who, like, just hate Antifa. <laughs> like, they hate the concept, and they're always like, look at these look at these protest fails, and I'm like, yeah, I'm cool. Uh, why would you fucking do the WAP dance at a Black Lives Matter fucking protest? Like, it just the looks weird bad. Vibe. And it's like, this is all your people. I'm like, no. This is one person. Also not my people. See, whenever somebody says something against Antifa, I always tweet that I'm like the supreme commander of Antifa. Oh, yeah. I had, I forgot. I, for, like, I wear that green mask to work. Yeah. Because it's the one they gave me. But I was like, I forgot it. I washed it and left it in my laundry basket. So I'm like, fuck. I'll use the other one I have that I like w- was going to use for winter, which is like this plaid scarf that's like more of a it's like a face mask yeah and so fucking this dude sees me and he just like points at me and i point back at him like this and then he comes over to me later and he's like where'd you get that and i'm, not, and I'm like i already know where he's going i'm like oh i got this at the antifa meeting <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like yeah i met all the leaders they're really cool guys so we're gonna overthrow the government <laughs> oh yeah he's not stupid like he doesn't think i'm serious i he he, he does listen to me like i told him like antifa's not a group it's a movement and also, there's it's like, like a, it's an ideology. It's an ideology, and then he's just like yeah, and but he still thinks like the people who like go like Antifa are just kind yeah. of embarrassing. Do you want to help me co-write my next video essay? I don't know. Maybe I'll help you. Cause uh, whatever. Not enough people listen to this. Don't expect this soon because I'm literally 
barely writing it, but I'm working, I'm going to work on a really long video essay, just going to be called Star Wars is Antifa, and yeah. examining the anti-fascist themes throughout all the films. Damn, we got to watch Star Wars again. How awful. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's almost as if I picked something that's really easy. I also usually rewatch Star Wars around Christmas. Hell yeah. Gotta watch that. For- I gotta watch through all Fast and the Furious again. To, you gotta well, you gotta enough? finish uh, Mando season one before we start spoiling it. Oh yeah, you're of the right. Show. And because season two, when does Wandavision come out? Uh, sometime this year. So, okay, so within the next three months. Now let's enter a really fun part of the show. That's where you just back, play something. Where I play a, a movie trailer. And Ian has to react to it. Yeah. Okay. Because I saw this come up on Twitter and I was like, this looks great. Wow. I already hate it. So this is Bobbleheads the movie. Unbelievable. You're playing at a time. Why does the cat look normal? (laughs) When the family's gone, our humans have gone. Why are we standing here? The bobbleheads are on. Let's not let our prototypes give us a big is head. Is the cat a bobblehead as well? Yeah. Why is this not loading? God doesn't want it to happen. I don't want it to happen. <laughs> what the There's fuck? an anime girl on screen that looks like a fucking, like... It looks like a less lewd version. Oh, it's Brenda's song. Deuce. Oh, that's why it sounded familiar. And purple. I'm done residing with Inferis. With guest star Cher. Hey, Bubbles, how's it going? <laughs> Why? <laughs> with guest Anybody star home? Cher. You're attempting to penetrate the perimeter. The key. Stand back. I'll extinguish them. Take that, intruders. With two uninvited guests. Ooh la la. <laughs> Certainly beats living in a cramped double wide. Time to shake things up. So what, is the implication there that they're fucking? Lord made dirt, it don't hurt. What? These people the, when the, the, the room's case. shaking. Our duty to defend the house. Oh, maybe. Yes. So wait, the what's wrong with these people? What did they do? Absolutely. Are they, they like moved stealing into the house? The house. Well, looky here. It's why. I think I I think that. I bet that, you know what, maybe their house or whatever is like an Airbnb. Maybe. But but Bobbleheads the movie, you've got to watch this trailer because I'm going to play the sound of it over this, but there is no fucking Why is it sponsored by Microsoft Azure? I have no fucking clue. And I don't, okay, this video is fucking borked right now. Yeah. But, God... It is just the the concept of like it's cash bobbleheads in. are trying to come back and be the new and, and be like the Lego stop movie. stealing our spot Funko Pop. The Lego Movie was good, but it has led to so much dumb bullshit. Yeah. Also, the Lego Movie is based off of a property and a franchise like that we've literally all grown up with. Well, and then there was the Playmobil Movie. The Lego Movie too? <laughs> no, there was an actual Playmobil movie. Okay, well, the Lego Movie was a concept that they brought up a long time ago, and everyone was like, "I can't believe they're trying to make this." And then the Clone High guys were attached to it, and people yeah. were like, "Okay, maybe." Then mm-hmm. we went and watched it, and it was all better than we thought it was. It was gonna so be. good. It was really good. And the and, Lego Batman movie and then is great. Immediately, we're like, "I guess we'll just simp for Chris Lord and Phil Miller." Yeah. Forever. Until they do something bad, they still haven't. Yeah. Maybe. No, they haven't. Done. Until they make Clone High Season 2 and it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Really wish they would bring Gandhi back. I wish I saw that the... Uh, I, there is a large part of me that wants to see the version of Solo that they did. Before Ron Howard came and Probably be fucked it. Probably pretty good. I think Release it would the be. Lord and Miller cut. <laughs> Release the Lord and Miller cut. Yeah. Um... But Anyways, that looks fucking awful. Yeah, I know. I love it. I don't. I, I like it, bad things. That looks boring. Yeah, I don't know. I might watch it. And speaking of bad, boring things, Ian. What? The Demon Slayer movie. <laughs> I'm kidding. But uh, the Demon Slayer How movie. How dare you? Demon Slayer is very good. It's fine. Uh, the Demon Slayer movie opened at number one at the Japanese box office this week, Ian. Whoa. Uh, triple, it did triple what Weathering With You did in the same time period. Uh, like of how in like it's opening weekend or whatever. That makes sense because the, the this the story arc 
is yeah. required. Yeah. You actually have to watch this uh, this movie. But you have to have already seen an entire season of television to get it. Yeah. It's not like... And it was the number one anime that year. And I think like one of its volumes outsold One Piece. Like it's got... it's. It's, oh, it yeah. has the clout behind it, but uh, it, uh, there are rumors that uh, because it, it's gotten and this is like during a pandemic, but like record breaking three hundred and thirty five billion yen at the box office debut it's it's like opening weekend. Mill isn't it? Yeah, yeah. over three hundred. That's like yeah, effectively just take a zero out of it. Two zeros. Two zeros rather. Yeah, because five hundred yen is five dollars. Yeah. So if the conversion actually still matched up, it doesn't anymore. But. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, that would be like three hundred and thirty-five million dollars at the opening weekend for an animated film with a much lower budget than that. Uh, and there are rumors that it might dethrone your name as the highest-grossing Japanese movie of all time. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Hi. No. Nah. I don't. No. Nah. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Only in. Ja- only in. Ja- only in Japan. O- only in Japan. Yeah. Okay. Because your name's the highest grossing Japanese movie of all time in Japan. Okay. It's also the highest grossing animated film worldwide. Yeah. Um, let's see, how much did your name make? It might be on track to, but I feel like I don't think it's the highest grossing animated film worldwide. I think it's just the highest grossing I anime film. I believe it is. I don't know. I don't think it made more money than fucking Toy Story. I think it actually did. That was like the thing. It made three. Oh, never mind. It only made three hundred fifty-seven million worldwide. Your name? Yeah. So wouldn't this be way really close to on track? It would be. Yeah, it would. All, it would if we, you know, I think our math is wrong. <laughs> like, how much did you say it made? Three hundred thirty-five billion yen at the box office. Okay, three hundred thirty-five billion yen to the USD. Oh, 3.35 billion yen. 3.35 billion yen. One, two, three. Yeah, never mind. Obviously, then yeah. So it's it's a <laughs> it's a while away. Then the, yeah. There's like nine zeros in billion, right? Yeah. So so three three five four. Then just. Zero, 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 I think, right? I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, pro- all right, I'm sure I got this wrong. It's like 300, 3.19 million. Yeah, okay. That's about right. So, yeah, that's uh, that, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, so that's 3, 3.35 billion yen at the box office opening weekend. Which again, triple what Weathering with You did, and that's the follow up to fucking Your Name, which is the highest grossing anime film of all time. Yeah. Uh, so doing way better than that thing. Uh, really interesting. You know, Demon Slayer is cool, but like again, the thing that's surprising about it is that it's a it's a sequel to a television show. Like you don't get yeah, One Piece doesn't do those m- numbers. Yeah, like and highest and, grossing oh highest grossing anime films it's go it's your name is number one spirited away spirited away yep howl's moving castle yep. ponyo yep. and it stops me at four <laughs> i mean that'd but do that's it. anime specifically yeah well spirited away if you remember was like did Huge. it win the oscar i uh, i believe so yeah weathering you with you is five so yeah so this could pokemon the first movie is number seven hell yeah <laughs> Um. Yeah, Dragon Ball Super Broly is number twelve. Is yeah. One? Oh, One Piece Stampede is fifteenth. Do you know what's a, an interesting fact I learned? Is sixteenth. Yeah. This year, so I always thought like DBZ was like the most popular anime thing of all time in terms of like how much money it makes. Well, One Piece is more popular now. But uh, yeah, also but I mean, Doraemon like, and shit like that. But I mean, like worldwide and shit. Like, I feel like. D- Dragon Ball Z is a weird one because you know if you go to like more like the Latin countries, mm-hmm. it's like they fucking love Bleach. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Or like Saint Seiya. Saint Seiya, especially. Everyone has like their their. We thing love. Like, listen, we stand Saint Seiya in this house because I don't of live in this house. Knights of the Zodiac. <laughs> sure, I just I also didn't grow up on. I it. thought you were with me when we were doing the Iran thing. Yeah, because I'm aware of it, but I didn't actually watch Saint Seiya. Oh, I watched a ton of it as a kid, but I can't watch it now because it doesn't have Iran. It doesn't mm-hmm. have the Canadian dub. 
you just watch the opening before. Yeah. <laughs> and or no, and you just, I ran. <laughs> if the dub's not available, just go fucking find Steal the place it. where it is. Yeah. yeah. It's like there's people I'm, who still like think who still like they won't watch Dragon Ball Z unless it's the Blue Ocean dub. It's just Ocean, but yeah. They called it Blue Ocean for a long time. Really? Yeah. But the company was just called Ocean. I don't know. They called it like, maybe there was like a blue dub and an ocean dub or something, and they became yeah. like the same one. Yeah. I don't know. I think Funimations is better. They have less voice actors, but more talent. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the Ocean dub Ocean did the good old Gundam stuff. Yeah, they did. Like their Dragon Ball dub was good enough. It's just that yeah. their Goku they changed Goku's like every fucking season. Damn. Uh, Brian Drummond was there the whole time though. Anyway, the thing that I was gonna say about uh, about Dragon Ball and how much money it made worldwide is. It's only this year surpassed the amount of money it has grossed uh, above Gundam. Like, Dra- DBZ made less money overall than Gundam did for years. And oh, I was there's like, no giant Goku statue in fucking... You're right. Fuck, yeah. I w- oh, it is just called Ocean Group. Yeah. Oh, there's the Blue Water dub and the Ocean dub. Mm. Yeah, I feel like the Ocean dub didn't finish the show, so though. So, like... If you it's, if you're a purist, if you're an ocean the voices, purist, uh, so they were um, they're related to the ocean group as well. Oh, that might be it. Yeah. Okay, uh, I got a couple more pieces of news here. Uh, we got our first look at the Uncharted movie. Well, a picture. Yeah, uh, we saw our first look as at Tom Holland as a younger Nathan Drake in a set photo of, n- photo of Nolan North and Tom chilling out. Uh, these gave me hope, and uh, and like I thought this looked pretty cool. Uh, and then I went to the IMDb page and saw some of the worst casting ever. I don't know if you're aware of this. I didn't, but I also didn't really care that much. Uh, Marky Mark Wahlberg is playing Sully. You know, I guess it makes sense for about a man who goes to Asian countries and just brutally beats up the natives. Uh, um, but, but that's a bad cast. Like that's like I get it. Sorry, that it's goddamn young. Sullivan. Like that's like Sully doesn't have a Boston accent. Like yeah, if they were like, uh, uh, it would I'm be Sully. A- goddamn Sullivan. <laughs> I'm Mark Wahlberg. I'm gonna. Um, this is the voice I make for every role I play. That's his voice. <laughs> There's only one... The plants are killing people? Oh, no. <laughs> it's the trees. <laughs> it's the fucking trees. Uh, yeah, no, I don't... This... I don't let... Mark Wahlberg's a piece of shit for being, like, a giant racist. Yeah. Um, but also, just also bad being super Christian one. and pretty much almost originating... Um, uh, if I was on the 9-11 planes, I would have stopped it. I love My that. grandpa was on the planes. Rip to your grandpa, but, but I'm, I'm different. different. That was not something Mark Wahlberg said, but it's what he pretty much meant. <laughs> no, he said in an interview, he's like, man, you know, some days I I pray, I wish I would have been on that plane because I could have stopped it. Yeah. I'd have gone up to him and I would have been like, hey, yo, it's me, a shitty rapper and even worse actor. <laughs> it's me, Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch. <laughs> Ooh. Do you, you got to let me off this plane or else I can't make smooth vibrations too. <laughs> good vibrations fuck whatever good vibration the, the only good song he's ever done it's a great song yeah but it's also his only good one yeah it's there's a reason only the good things survive from old times yeah in that way um uh but also uh who else? other than that terrible casting uh it's also being directed by ruben flesher flesher uh who uh did gangster squad both zombie lands and venom I do like some of his filmography, but well, he has Zombie Land One's good. Hmm? Zombie Land One is good. Two is good too. Didn't see it. It's fine. Like it, but like what I, what I have here is like I like some of his filmography, but he has no distinctive si- style and is no guarantee of quality. Yeah. Uh, Dan Trachtenberg was previously attached to direct, uh, but I don't he know left. Who that after, is either. He j- he left after creative differences. Um, so Dan Trachtenberg did uh, 10, Co- 10 Cloverfield Lane, which is okay. an incredible film. You know what would be fucking dumb? What? If they cast someone to play Elena. Yeah, she can't show up. They yeah. did cast someone to play Chloe. That's fine, because he did know Chloe. Yeah. Chloe was a woman he used to fuck. Yeah. And that's the whole thing in Uncharted 2. Yeah. 
is that they had a prior relationship. They casted somebody that's like because Chloe is a character that like in we find out in Lost Legacy is like supposed to have like a partially like uh I think like Indian background, like India Indian. Like so they actually cast somebody I don't with know, that she's background from for the, some place that just gives people good asses. <laughs> she's got an Australian accent and she got a great ass. Brian Cranston's in the movie? What? I just looked up Uncharted movie and it gave me five people. Six. And the last face is... The last two faces is Antonio Banderas I know Antonio, and Brian Cranston. I know Antonio Banderas was in there, but I didn't know about Brian Cranston. I would prefer Brian Can- Cranston be Victor Sullivan. Yeah, if you got Brian Cranston, make him be Victor Sullivan. I get... Okay, Brian Cranston's a bit... Looks old... Like, if they were to make an Uncharted movie about... Now Modern Uncharted, yeah. like where Nathan Drake just like make 30 it J.K. And Simmons like sixty. Nah, nah. Just, I get more. Okay, I understand Mark Wahlberg Victor because he's Su- not. Vic- yeah. This is like a twenty, a mid twenties Nathan. Victor Drake. Sullivan is if like J.K. Simmons, Indiana Jones's dad from the third Indiana Jones. Oh, sorry, sorry, J. Jonah Jameson, uh, uh, Indiana Jones's dad, and um, who's the third one? My brain had a third one. Antonio Banderas is definitely going to be the villain. Of course. Yeah. I'm Sophia done. Ali. Yeah, she's the one she's playing Chloe. Chloe Frazier. But I need to see <laughs> I need to see her ass real quick. <laughs> I don't think she's been in enough stuff. Um I haven't seen anything. It'd be funny if like someone who's like they were like, "Oh, this looks like just a fun movie. I'm just going to go check it out." And then they're like, oh, I really, I really stan, um, Noe, <laughs> I don't know, the Nate-Chloe relationship. And then they go, like, play the video games. They're like, who's this Elena cunt getting in on my ship? <laughs> but it's Maybe she's gone in the second game. I heard Chloe's back in Uncharted 2. Maybe they were like, they're like, oh, it's the one, he goes to back to the woman he really loves. And the all of Uncharted 2 is just him going like, I don't fuck with you anymore, Chloe. I'm going to go fuck this white bitch. <laughs> And then on Charted Three, it's like we were almost married. Yeah, no, they yeah they were all they almost they got were engaged, married. but she he kept doing the fucking thing. He kept doing adventures, and then they get just married. like his problem in Uncharted Four. <laughs> then they get married between Uncharted Three and Four and have the same issue. Yeah, but it's it well feels, the issue wasn't that he was he kept that he was still doing it's adventures. That, it's that he lied to her. Yeah, and like made it like seem like he was on this business trip where he might as well just been off in Las Vegas fucking some whores. Yeah, and then at yeah. the end, they're probably still doing adventure stuff together. But it's just now they have a kid, they leave back at home to play Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, in the year twenty twenty five, and also they have like the same. What house. year? Hold on. If because I feel like Uncharted four has to take place in like twenty fifteen, the year uh, but it came I out. I think Uncharted is like the th- does the same thing as like comic books. Like yeah, but also like I was gonna say Archer because Archer does it to the extreme. Where it's just like, it just takes place outside of time. Yeah, but what I'm saying is like... It's modern, but it doesn't, they don't... So hyper time. Yeah. But what I'm saying is how many years after the story of Uncharted 4 does Uncharted 4's epilogue take place? Well, she's like 15. So it has to be like 15 years after Uncharted 4. Yeah. So realistically, you know, uh, 2030? The year 2030? Yeah, probably around there. And she's playing Crash Bandicoot on a PS One. Well, it's well the, if you look that fucking <laughs> yeah, know, house they're living in is straight up just the house at the beginning of the game. No, it's not. It's like a beach house. I know, but the inside looks very similar to the house they were living in at the beginning. You know the fucking thing yeah. at the end of Ant Man too. Yeah, where they like take the house and they just pop it up in the middle of, of a fucking yeah. beach. That's what they feel like they did it Uncharted. And it's like, that's the house they live in. And then they built a house on the side where they do their work. And then she's like rummaging through and finds all their guns that still have well, lying the, around. The thing that I figured was that, because the house seemed like, the, the walls seemed different colors and stuff in, in the epilogue. So I thought that they just, the implication was that they moved all the furniture there. Yeah. But the house layout was still very similar. Really similar. Uh, you know, they yeah. might have just moved and built the house themselves. That's also true. Yeah. I think 
Nate could figure out building a house. I think... I feel like... They have the connections. There's definitely, like, everyone they... Hunt Nathan Drake doesn't know how to build a house, but he wanted Elena to think he could, so then he tried to figure it out and improvise, and he, he did a to giant make it. fucking bamboozle where yeah. every single time she showed up, he was, like, holding something to make it look like. Yeah. He was doing something, and there's, like... The He's holding like guy a from Uncharted th- Cutters like hanging out in yeah. the background. He's like, I used to work in construction. Yeah. If this was a live action movie, I'd be Jason Statham. Yeah. He's just Jason Statham. Yeah. He was great. He's great. I like that dude. I thought he was going to betray you though. He does. He, he does. as he as a joke. Yeah, he joke betrays you right at the beginning. Yeah. And you think, "Oh, he's going to real betray me later." Yeah, and, and then he like, doesn't. No, never mind. It's a goof and a gaff. <laughs> Doesn't he he they reference him in 4. Yeah. Because they're like they're because t- it's one of the guys they knew like yeah. s- even fucking Sam knew him. So. All right, get somebody that looks like Jason Statham but t- twenty years younger to play him in the Honestly, Uncharted film. Jason Statham's kind of eternal. No, if he showed up, Hold I would on. just be like, yeah, that go doesn't for it. make any sense because <laughs> Tom Holland is baby. Yeah. Also, with the age Tom Holland is, I yeah. don't see that face growing. Over the course of five years, I'm looking like Nathan Drake. Some I'm facial hair on him. I I don't know. You know, Tom Holland can probably grow some facial I don't think hair. He can. I don't think he grows nice. I don't think he can grow any. He's gonna have to get like hems or some shit. <laughs> I don't think he can grow any facial hair. I yeah. think he can grow a shitty mustache. Do you think he can grow? Like, I bet you he can. Do you grow think it grows just, like how Chris, how Chris's grows? Yeah. Where it's like, I can see that it's there. It's just it's so thin. Yeah. Yeah, which is weird because Chris's dad has like a fucking huge goatee. I've never met Chris's dad. I well, I I've met him a couple times. I saw him again like two weeks ago, and it's still like the same fucking giant Wilford Brimley ass goatee. Hell yeah! And it's like all and it's like man, you've had that for fucking <laughs> fifteen years now. <laughs> That's fun. But I guess when you're like an old man, it's like you're never gonna change your style ever again. You're always gonna look the same. Yeah. Anyways, what's uh, what's going on? Oh, last piece of news is uh, that Chris Pratt sucks. Oh yeah, well, it's not news. <laughs> we know that Chris Pratt sucks, and I there's like a isn't there like a thing with religion where you're not really supposed to fucking get involved in politics? Um, I don't know. Chris Pratt just seems like you know how he only plays idiots. Yeah, I feel like he's just an idiot. Chris Pratt tries to radiate himbo energy in every role he has, except the problem is IRL. It's like extremely he's a much qualified. worse person. He's like an extremely qualified himbo, though, which is the fucking issue. Yeah, like the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy One is him like dancing around, looking like a fool. Great fun, and scene. then he, but then he goes through this whole like scientific bullshit to steal the fucking orb yeah. that has the space stone in it. Or no, that's the power stone, isn't it? It's the power stone. Yeah, it's the power stone. Yeah, so he goes through all this, and he's like, he does it very precisely, and then like with great dexterity he escapes and then he also fights Gamora he does everything very well it's just that he goes like oh oh, sorry I didn't know how this machine worked and it's like oh fuck off same with Jurassic Park or Jurassic World where it's like Jurassic yeah, looks, World his character's way more of an asshole that's the yeah that, he like shows up and he's like hi I don't know how to speak to people but god damn do I know how to deal with velociraptors but then he's like hey remember that time we had sex woman I work with yeah Remember the time that you fulfilled your role in this movie by kissing me? (laughs) (laughs) And that's your whole purpose is to be hot for me? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, we all know that Chris Pratt kind of sucked because of his... I I literally think he doesn't... He's like... He joins this church and he's just like... They really helped me out through a darker point in my life where I was definitely a piece of shit and cheated on my wife. Yeah. And then then it was like he goes through all that. And then... You know the fucking scene in Community... Yeah. Where the guy's like, it's going to be a maze. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Walsh's character, where it turns out he's like the Nazi janitor. Yep. Um, I feel like he <laughs> he was Troy and Abed, where he's at the church, and they're like, see, he sees all this anti-gay imagery or whatever. Yeah. Around, and they're just like, oh, that's just biblical paintings, but it says like copyright 2015 <laughs> at the bottom. And he's just yeah. like, oh, okay. And he still hasn't put it together that he's part of a hate church. Yeah. I mean, the problem is, is like... You know, as we know, when he went on on whatever it was, Kimmel, fucking 
Seth Meyers, whatever, when he was talking about his the, spirituality. One of, the, one of the same old white dudes that we've been seeing on yeah, fucking one TV of the talk shows. shows. He was talking about his church and his, his religion, and he started going to this place specifically and get, dropping names and saying shit publicly. One of the first things that happened when that clip came out was Ellen Page quote retweeting it going, Okay, but is he not going to talk about how that church is historically really shitty to LGBTQ people? Yeah, Ellen I just, Page I, did. Should not like some activist person who's not famous and not in Hollywood, yeah. an actual actor. I think he literally just doesn't. I think he's like the standard white guy where it's like, yeah, they're cool. Well, and they're it's not like, mean to me. They're not mean to me. An extremely like, rich and powerful white man. Oh, fuck, what is it? Um... Yeah, but Kevin Spacey didn't fuck me, so like I can still <laughs> enjoy his movies. Yeah, it's some dumb bullshit. Like yeah, that. But, but I like, don't know. Maybe those women maybe shouldn't have been around Bill Cosby. <laughs> Whatever the women in the heart with the Harvey Weinstein now, diddle, Ian, they got work after now, that. Now, Ian, the thing that you're saying is very nice, and I'm glad you're giving Chris Pratt, a human man, the benefit of the doubt, because here's me crushing that. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> All right, so Chris Pratt. Uh, was seen wearing a Don't Tread on Me shirt that's unironic, Don't Tread on Me shirt. Uh, he hunts for sport. And um, on his Instagram, despite him publicly being, you know, I'm apolitical, I don't make political statements, I don't do that stuff, I keep that distant from who I am. Okay. On his Instagram, he does follow both Ben Shapiro and PragerU. I don't know the, uh, the second one. It's like a fake university that... It's like... I mean... Okay. It's bad. It's a bad. The first one, the "Don't Tread on Me" thing. Yeah, that's like old school California thing. Yeah, but it's a. It's like a. It's been co opted. Yeah, I, I. I'm gonna chop that up to him still being stupid. The other stuff you got me yeah. with hunting for sport. You're a giant dickhead. Yep. Use the animal or fuck off. I think he does cook them, but he still hunts for sport, even though he's like a rich man who doesn't have to. Yeah. Um. If you're gonna hunt for sport, go take it to a butcher at least. Like, yeah, I think he does. I think he does that shit. Then that's himself. not as bad. But like, yeah. still, there's probably a hunter out there who could who would sell it and make get money. Yeah, contribute to the economy. Yeah, instead of hey, here's fifty bucks or for an entire the, deer, and they're like, usually someone will or needs ask, the food. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Um, because there's nothing wrong with hunting. Sure. There's stuff wrong with hunting for sport. Yeah. Like. Personally, personally, I'm the kind of person who thinks that if you do it just for fun and you don't have to, that maybe you're like taking joy in the killing of an of an alive thing. Yeah, sure, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to agree with me or whatever, but I think there's people who can enjoy hunting, but then and then do it by and they supply a local a local butcher shop. That's fine. Sure. But if it's literally like you kill it, you tag it, and go, that's all. <laughs> Because you gotta tag it and fucking yeah. alert someone to actually come get it. If you're not, if you're not killing the animal and taking it yourself, yeah. somewhere, fuck you. Uh, but yeah, especially the following of Ben Shapiro and Prager U. Prager U is really bad. Uh, they make like horrible YouTube video. It's like a whole thing. Mm, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we know Ben Shapiro. And we know who he is. Wet ass P word. Wet ass P word. Every time I'm around Blake, Doctor I just your wife. I every time I'm around Blake, I just kept I just keep like Antifa. No, no, no. We're like walking his dog, and I'm just sitting there going like, "What ass p word?" <laughs> <laughs> Certified freak. Seven, Seven days a week. Days a week. What ass p word? Make, make that, that pull, pull out, out game, game week. week. Yeah. So like, and then Blake started doing it, and then we're like two hours past. We're just sitting there eating like pizza and wings, and I'm like, "What ass p word?" And he's like, "Fuck off." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then he did it like 10 minutes later. It's just a, it's a very easy, fun very thing to easy. dunk on someone for. Yeah. The Google Stadia <laughs> <laughs> is the premier video game console. Because you don't have to buy a console. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. So Chris Pratt sucks. Chris Pratt sucks. Uh, that doesn't of, mean... Kind of fuck you to all the people who like... All defended the, him. Yeah. Uh, you know what the funniest Including part of that? Including myself. <laughs> Dude, no. But the funniest part of that, obviously, like, Mark Ruffalo defending him, I feel like that sucks. Because Mark Ruffalo is, like, usually really good po at politics. He's, like, a... You know, he has good opinions on things. Like, he's a good dude. I think Mark Ruffalo was coming at it from the same perspective as me, where, where Mark Ruffalo was like, I think he's just stupid. <laughs> no, but, uh, like, James Gunn's defense was, like, they're 
trying to cancel. They're, they're trying to like fucking. James Gunn's defense is they did this to me, so no, I no, no, because just because he's Christian is what he was saying, and it's like that's not what people were mad at him for. James Gunn, again, James Gunn, you're supposed to be better than this. Like all your takes are usually good with pol- political shit. Yeah. Um. Also, James Gunn, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your job, please. Yeah. Um, um. Who else? Then I don't think Robert Downey Jr. Sorry, Robert Downey Jr.'s publishes, publicist's intern defended him. Yeah, uh, which was great. Uh, I'm sure the they said. That, I'm account. sure someone like. But on the Robert Downey Dooney- Downey Jr. post, hold on, I have more for this. Yeah, because it's funny. So the Robert Downey Jr. post showed a picture of Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Pratt hanging out on set together as pals. Um, I'm just grabbing some water. Okay. And uh, and like it's just a picture, right? Um, but then, like, if you look further back in Robert Downey Jr.'s Instagram, you'll see that that was a picture of uh, RDJ, Tom Holland, and Chris Pratt. But they photoshopped Tom Holland out from in between them very lazily, oh because Robert Downey Jr. is not friends with Chris Pratt. They've worked on one movie together. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like they, they were in the movie together for probably an hour, but then after that, they don't, they're not back together. They don't hang out in Endgame again. Yeah. Like, who knows if they're on set the same days, especially like... With they're the, probably on set together for the scene they yelled at each other for, but they yeah. were hardly there. Yeah, they might not even... Because uh, one of the scenes in Infinity War, or one a lot of Tom Holland scenes in Infinity War, because they didn't want him spoiling stuff, <laughs> because spoiling stuff is apparently worse than giving a good performance, uh, they had him alone and not telling him who he was acting against. Which is weird. Because it's like, at least yeah. have them on the same fucking green screen. Like, Yeah, it's... No, they were like, oh, we don't want to spoil who he's talking to. We're not giving him... It's because that- Tom Holland doesn't know how to shut the fuck up. But it's like... It's like, who fucking cares? I think the funniest You're making thing, actually, a worse movie because you don't want him to accidentally spoil small shit. Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> the funniest thing was when... Uh, in, <laughs> for the Infinity War, like, press stuff. Where <laughs> they, had, they put uh, Benedict Cumberbatch with him. So that every single time Tom Holland started to say something better than come back this, they're going, ap, 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 ap. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> no. I'm surprised someone didn't report like, Tom Holland is in a scene uh, interviewing with Benedict Cumberbatch. I bet there's a scene with Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. It's like, yeah, bro, they both live in New York. Of course there's a fucking scene with them. Yeah. It's like a worldwide epidemic. And like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, they do have a scene together. It's the scene where Doctor Strange goes, "I'm Doctor," uh, or sorry, Peter Parker is like, "I'm Peter Parker." Oh, Doctor Strange. Oh, oh we're, we're using, using fake, fake names. names. I'm, I'm Spider Man. <laughs> that is very funny. Um, yeah, I do. I like. I still like everything in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sure, I like those movies. I started watching Spider Man Homecoming again. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> Wait, don't, you don't like that? I, movie? I like it, but I also am like, I don't need to watch it. I want it's one of the one it's kinda of, like I skipped Guardians of the Galaxy one. Yeah. Because it's one Did you of, watch two again? I did. I th- did I not tell you about that? No, we we hadn't gotten there. I think last time I, you I were watching Civil War or Doctor Strange or whatever it was. I think I'd watch more than that. Um but yeah. Um Well then let's dump right into the weeks. Let's do it. Yeah, sure. This was like last week. I guess I just forgot to talk about yeah. it. So I skipped Guardians of the Galaxy a long time ago. Yeah. Because honestly, it's the one I've seen the most. Yeah. And I don't enjoy watching it as much as I used to. Yeah. I'm sure I'll probably still give it a three out of five. Mm-hmm. Like just it's a good movie. I think it's good, yeah. Um i Doctor Strange. Yeah, it's kind of meh. It's alright. It's just alright. Cool it's visuals, a, but it's like a overall 2.5. it's meh. Yeah. It's like a setup. I'm like, I kinda am curious because I think I think inherently that's a movie where its sequel is going to be better. Like, yeah, because because we don't have to just set everything. They had fucking they up. just had to fucking be like, this is where the time stone is, and it's like sick. Yeah, they had to have okay. We got time stone. We got who is Doctor Strange and what's his background and what's the backstory and what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we need to have a villain and probably Dormammu is required, right? Yeah, and then they fucking the way he beats Dormammu is interesting. Yeah, it's like a. It's a fun sacrifice thing. Yeah. Does he know? Or does he know that the time time loops are happening, or does he just die and then get sent back every time? 
Because, okay, so his whole plan is that he goes... I think he doesn't remember all of the hymns that... Or no, he does, because he says how many times he died at the end. Do you think he's just aware that he's dying? I think he's or? just aware he's dying. Because I, I, he, he, I think I would... I, like, Dormammu clearly... It goes on for a long time that Dormammu goes like, Fine, I'll fucking leave! Yeah, I think it's something like he... Like, we don't see all of them, but, like... Uh, uh, like, apparently it's, like, multiple years. It sounded like it was, like, a, a millennia. <laughs> like, yeah, like, it was, like, a long time. Yeah. But... It, I feel like I would just start showing up and be like, he kill me. <laughs> Let's just reset this. Let's just keep going. No, because he has to say the same thing because he maybe he'll accept. Yeah, and he's got to drive him crazy. I've come to bargain. Yeah. Um. Yeah, all right, movie. Mm-hmm. What's the one after that? Uh, after Doctor Strange, we jump into the year 2017. Thor Ragnarok. Guardians. Homecoming Thor. Okay, so I skipped Homecoming by accident because it's not on Disney+. Plus. Yeah. So I watched, um, I think Thor Ragnarok's before. No, Thor came no. in November, but I think Thor Disney was Plus the one has it was, first. Thor was, I think it was the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Then I think it's Spider-Man. Nope. Okay, Doctor Strange. Civil War came out and Doctor Strange came out the same year. And then Spider-Man. And then, and then Guardians 2 and then Spider-Man, then Thor. Okay. So then we'll just go to Guardians now. Yep. I like that movie a lot more than I remembered. Hell yeah. I don't like the beginning, though. Uh, You don't like the, the Mr. Like, Blue Sky? I like the song, obviously. I like that sequence. I think it's fun. It, that's all it is, though, is it's just fun. I like that it's got a big goopy guy. <laughs> it's really disgusting. Um, I don't know. It's like, it's all right. That's yeah. about it. Um. I literally don't like that. That yeah. was the part when I think it ruined for it for me because I also saw it was in Ohio when I was in Ohio. Yeah, I watched a bunch of movies when I was there. Yeah, um, we saw it all together. We went to some shitty local theater, and everyone else, me and Stevie, were like kind of just enjoying it. Everyone else though was like, "Fuck this movie!" Really? <laughs> yeah, they hated it because they don't so like weird. They not, they like watch superhero movies, but they don't really like the quippy stuff, and that's what Guardians oh, of the Galaxy well, is. Yeah. But yeah, so up until the part where the well, part I wouldn't even they, say Guardians is quippy. I think Guardians is more. It's just a comedy. Once they split up, like yeah. that's when the movie gets better to me. Well, that's when the plot's interesting. Yeah, because they split up because it's about well, the, obviously, like the main emotional core of that movie is is like family shit. So it's like Rocket Raccoon has no family except the Guardians, but he has to deal with... Uh, like, the male characters have to deal with toxic masculinity in the movie, and the characters who have and, family shit have to deal with family shit in the yeah, movie. Which which Quill has to deal with both. Yeah, Quill has both because he's the main character. Yeah. Um, the, the, like, scene on, the scene when they're killing everyone on the fucking um, the ship... That's great. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, and the scene, the scene right after, honestly, Guardians Two. The reason why I hype it up so much is it's the one that I feel the most like actual emotional connection with. Because, well, uh, it's because, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I've said this a couple times. I feel like I annoy you, Nathan. Every time. It's because you have daddy issues. Yeah, yeah. But it's also because it's about uh, his dad doing something horrible to his mom. Yeah, and, and it's <laughs> about, and, but it's also about toxic masculinity. Yeah, but and it's like, oh fuck, the scene where it's like you have battled it up so much. And you've decided that you're hard and you don't need fucking anybody. And it's like, you don't know me. And he's like, I know you, bar. I know you because you're me. Yeah, that is a good one. I'm like, fuck. Michael Rooker, I think is also kind of a piece of shit in real life. But is <laughs> that was a really good performance. He's great. <laughs> it was very fun. Um, there's one thing I don't get, but we'll get to that at sure. the end. Is it that they've they sort of changed his character slightly to be a better person in the second one? Yeah. yeah. No, no, that's not it. I kind of just go like. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. So they 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 steal the fucking raider ship. Yeah. They leave with James Gunn's brother, mm-hmm. Sean Gunn. Yeah. Sean Gunn now is the Mohawk at the end of the movie. Hell yeah. Um, they fucking <laughs> they escape. Really cool sequence where they're playing music. Yeah. They get they get the music back, like all the music because they had the the copies or whatever. The they, it was the two tapes, but then they got the Zune. Yeah, but. Didn't they also get, like, digital copies or something of the music? Well, that's what it is. Like, he got a Zune with all the music. 
Okay, but that... The, the, <laughs> Tell me that joke isn't good. Though. It is funny. It's, it's funny, very funny. funny. Because it's like, it, it's so dated. <laughs> if there it's, was like a ch- if there was like an eight-year-old watching this movie who literally was born when, <laughs> when Iron Man 1 came out. Yeah. If they were watching Star Wars, if this was their Star yeah. Wars, like how it was for me in like 2001. Yeah. I would literally be sitting there going, like, the Zoom comment is like, it's such It makes weird no, technology. it's a failure, it's a failed thing that lasted, like, three years. It's it, in the early 2000s, the early to mid-2000s. It's like, it was late 2000s. It was, it was around when iPods became iPhones. Really? Yeah. I, I, would, I thought it came around the same time as, like, the, everyone was, like, hyping up the iPod Classic. No, it was iPod Touch times, because it had a touch screen. I think there. Was, I think it started around the classic. I can Google it. Yeah, because the 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 zoom he gives you he gives him isn't a touch. It looks more like an iPod. Uh. So, anyways, <laughs> the, there's that scene. Uh. There's all the stuff when they're hanging out, and then it cuts to time to kill Ego because he's trying to kill Quill and he's trying to take over the entire galaxy. He's trying to Thanos everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh. By Absorbing them into himself. Okay, so they lasted from 2006 to 2012. So let's say they last from 2006 to 2008, and then they struggled for four years. Yeah. So, yeah, then they fucking play the chain by Fleetwood Mac when he starts fighting him, and I'm like, oh! Yeah. It's a good song. Fleetwood Mac Rumors is probably one of the best albums ever created, but it's created by a band who's like, I fucking hate every single person in this goddamn band. Yeah. Because they were all, like, fucking each other and, like, cheating on each other and shit. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, great scene with him beating him up. Wish that lasted longer because that song's just so yeah. good. And Kurt Russell's great in the movie. Yeah. He's even better in Fast and the Furious than <laughs> as Mr. Nobody. <laughs> That's his character's name in Fast I know. and the Furious. I know. It's so bad. And his base is called Nowhere. Yeah. Just like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, you know, but he yeah. may have been your father, but he wasn't your daddy. Good line, great. So, anyways, the part that confuses me. Yeah. They're in space, everything's blown up. Mm-hmm. They only have one re entry pack or something. Yeah. In the first movie, mm-hmm. Quill has the mask thing. Yeah, the mask that thing he lets gives him to Gamora. Yeah. That lets him breathe. Mm-hmm. Where did his mask go? In what? In the second one? Yeah. Doesn't he lose the helmet? Or doesn't it get broken or something? No, it's, just, it's not even a helmet. It's a thing he taps on the well, yeah, side of his ear. Well, yeah, but doesn't the thing get broken? I... When? In the Doesn't it happen in the movie? I don't know. I don't remember ever seeing it. But I remember during the final scene when he gives him, like, the space thing so it covers his whole body. I was like, where's your, where's your mask, bro? <laughs> you could have just traded. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They wanted to go for the emotional output. Yeah. Maybe there is a scene where, like, it, during yeah, the battle, he, like, scene. smashes it or something. Maybe but... it's a deleted scene. Or maybe it just doesn't matter because we were trying to get to this emotional moment and it doesn't really matter. And also, I just kind of only picked it up on the second watching, so... Yeah. Well, uh, if, it, if it's... It's what we would call fridge logic, right? It's what? not something that bothers you when you watch the movie. It's something that bothers you ten minutes later when you open the fridge to get a beer and you go, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was very drunk watching these movies. Yeah. Uh, not anymore. My life is very boring right now. Oh, man. Yeah. Whatever. Um, I just want a vodka soda really badly. <laughs> like, I got home last night after a really shitty day at work, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> there's everything in the house. I can go make one right now. You, you know, Ian, that's the that's the thing you have to fight against, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my alcoholism. Yeah, so then it's really sweet. They all, the raider, the, the, they're, te- they're villains. The Ravagers. The Ravagers. They are villains, though. Well, no, uh, so, the, by the way, all of the Ravagers who were, like, friends with, uh, friends with uh, Yondu, by the way, in that scene, like, including Sly Stallone's character and the robot and all those people, uh, those characters were the original Guardians of the Galaxy with Yondu in the comics. Okay, that makes sense. Because the current team of Guardians of the Galaxy came out in 2007. Okay, so was there a guy who can use the thing? The, th- hmm? the Doctor Strange powers, what else is it? Oh, the magic? Yeah. I, there's like a guy who at one point does like this and like moves his hands and it has like the same sparkly fucking energy shit. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. And it kind of looked like it. There's so I was that like, that's interesting if like this, because they make it sound like it's a very, the art 
It's a very centralized Earth thing, but clearly it works everywhere across the galaxy. So yeah. why wouldn't if someone else have figured it out? On a different Or planet. some human accidentally was like, I'm just going to think of a random spot in the universe and see if it exists. And then they just kept doing that. Eventually they go there and they trained a bunch of people or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they all showed up. They did their 21 gun salute, whatever the fuck yeah. they called it. It was super cool. Yeah, it was great. Heart touching moment. Movie's just kind of over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then we get to the best movie. <laughs> yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming. No, because I had, I was on Netflix and not Disney Plus and I forgot, so I just kept going okay, through. Okay, so you watched Thor. I watched Thor. I oh, watched yeah. I watched Thor Ragnarok is the best. It's great. I it's the one the, I, I know I said I didn't want to watch Guardians because it's the one I've seen the most. That's a lie. I've seen Thor Ragnarok the most. Yeah. But every single time I've watched Thor Ragnarok, I'm, it's delightful. Ragnarok, I'm like this movie's sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's funny. It's fun. It's cool. Yeah. It's got some good character stuff in it. Um, again, like personally, I do think like Thor Ragnarok and Guardians Two fight for being the best Marvel movie in my books, just because Guardians Two is like has multiple moments that make me want to cry, despite being a mostly funny movie, and Thor Ragnarok is just a, a ridiculously funny movie. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks what happens to them like five minutes after that movie ends. <laughs> five minutes after. Yeah. Well, that's the po point of the post credits is you see like, we're just going to be just fine. And then Thanos' ship and then it's over. Yeah. Um, it's a good bit. But they fucking, you know, that movie, all of it's great. Jeff Goldblum's really funny. He's great. Asgard. <laughs> yeah. And then he smiles Asgard. to himself. Yeah. Or uh, the the slaves are revolting. Oh, I don't like that I don't words. like that word. Sorry. The prisoners with jobs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, the, also that lady is really funny. She's funny. Taika Waititi's worked with her a couple times. Tessa Thompson's great. Tessa Thompson's great. Um, hopefully she's in Thor 4. She will be. She, fucking she was in Endgame. For like a fucking... She was in it. They might have well have used say, her. So was Korg. They got both of them in there. Yeah. So you know they're coming back. Meekus was probably there as well. Just yeah, maybe Meek Korg was. stepped on him again. Yeah. Meek yeah, was there I, too. That's really good. The whole fucking... That movie's great. Yeah, and then I started Infinity War, uh, and then I sat there and was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> where I the fuck was Spider Man?" <laughs> yeah, you skipped Spider Man: Homecoming and Black Panther. Oh no, I watched Black Panther. Sorry. Oh shit. Okay. Oh wait, no, I fell asleep during Black Panther. Black Panther's really good. I don't really have an interest in watching it because I'm just gonna get sad. Yeah, because Chadwick Boseman's great. It's a good movie. Um, the fucking that I think unfortunately the best action sequence in that movie Black Panther yeah the in that movie yeah is the where are they Busan oh the Korea one yeah yeah in, in Korea that part is so cool it's it's yeah it's, it's cool like well, the music it's, is sick you're it's none of it or not I don't know about none of it but like it's it's a, inherently a fight scene that's low CGI like it's a one long take bit that is great and uh it's in a physical set with actual choreography that you can't just put the CGI man over it so it looks awesome. Yeah. It's Trevor, like, the suit does like, not look on. great sometimes. If you though. like the fight choreography of that scene, you have to watch Creed. I do kind of want to watch Creed. Dude, hell yeah. Yeah. Ryan Coogler does it. Michael B. Jordan's the main character. There is a... There is a... Uh, one of the boxing scenes is done all in one long take. Every single time someone says Ryan Coogler, I think of the yeah. fucking Red Letter Media bit. Yeah. About there. I guess there was some shitty movie called like the black cougar or something and it's and they kept saying like it's weird that black panther was directed by ryan coogler when <laughs> this is all a joke but the yeah. black cougar was directed by ryan panther <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like god i fucking hate this joke but it's so funny because they say it's one of those jokes where it's like it's not funny and no one laughs yeah. but <laughs> fucking mike keeps saying it every time <laughs> it's like yeah it's like in the black cougar <laughs> I don't even know uh, if it's a real movie. Anymore. It was. It was. It was? The, it was on best of the worst. That's okay, That's probably where it was. But yeah, that movie's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, eat shit, Andy Circus. You're a villain. And they kill him. Yeah. Which is weird. They kill him kind of like very quickly. Because I was like, oh, I kind of want to see him. Because they gave him the arm that shoots sound, like that character has. But I wanted to see him one day have. The really stupid outfit that he wears in the comics. What if it's like that wasn't what... That still didn't kill him. He just keeps coming back. Oh, yeah. And he just... Because in the comics, he has one arm that's like one of those sonic cannons where it's just like the little the little thing and then the bigger ball on the end. Mm. 
you know, and that's just one of his arms. And like, uh, maybe he he's just a keeps dumb losing character. body parts and just keep, he becomes like a robot because he gets shot in the head. Right? He fights Daredevil in Mark Wade's Daredevil run, which is fun. He, but he, he, he shot him in the head. To kill I him, think right? he did. Yeah. So what? And if? he kills his own girlfriend to do it. Yeah, because he's a sick fuck. He's a piece of shit. To show that he's a villain. Mm-hmm. And then they almost kill the other, the only other white guy in the movie. Yeah. And then he goes to Wakanda. Yeah. To be saved. Don't they like shove like a per like a thing inside of his? I don't know. They don't. They they make him drive a plane through space. <laughs> well, they make him drive the plane like how sure he was driving the car. Yeah. Anyways, that's a good movie. It's a fun movie. And I started Infinity War, and then I got to the part where they went to space. And then you were like, hold on, I haven't seen Spider-Man yet. Yeah. So then I went back and started watching Spider-Man. I got to the point <laughs> Yeah. where they where she's like, ta- the girl, Liz, yeah. is talking about, Spider-Man's kind of cute. I don't know. And they're like, ew, what if he's an old man over there? She's like, I don't know. That's the mystery of it. And then Ned's like, Peter knows Spider-Man. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's the Wednesday house party scene coming up. That Empire House Party scene's good. I don't know. I just, <laughs> Yo, it's Penis Parker. Yeah. Well, that. I, I think I'm just going to skip that one and go just watch Infinity War and Endgame. Why don't you like Because I just want to watch Far From Home again. Well, I think Homecoming is like kind of like low key better. I might just fast forward through it. <laughs> What's wrong with the party scene? I don't know. It's just I don't deal well with cringe stuff. And like a high school like shit like that, like coming of age stuff is very cringe to me. I don't know. I like coming of age movies. I don't. Because I never came of age. I'm still a child. Goo goo gaga. <laughs> That's right. I devolved to infant just now. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know though. House, your first house party in real life is usually pretty awkward. Uh, mine was cool. Oh wait, the first one you go to or the first one you have? Go to. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, whose but- house was it? I went to somebody's house and then got horrible anxiety and vomited in the toilet after one drink. Nice. Was oh, that yeah. here? No. Okay. That was in high school. I don't know. Because you always said you didn't like the people you went to school with. Maybe you just didn't fucking bother. No, I, I retroactively don't like them. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I... Uh... I, I wasn't going to not go to a party. I'm not that much of a nerd. Yeah, we didn't go... The only party I skipped, and I say this on the podcast all the time because it's funny, what? is I skipped my graduation party because it was the same day that The Last of Us came out. Oh, yeah. And sick, I played The Last of Us. Sick, <laughs> sick options. Yeah. I don't know. We used to go to a um, person who used to live by me. Yep. We used to go to her, her I remember her. For, yeah. Yep. For house parties all the time. And then it got played out. Then we had that one weird moment where I, Irish goodbye and was like, fuck this place. I'm so done coming here. <laughs> and then... A dude who had the same name as me showed up and his friend had a gun. <laughs> uh, This was high school? No, no, this was after high school. We went to her place for high I school because her not, parents were cool. I was not there when that happened. You were around, but you weren't there that day. It was like one of the ones where it was... We used to go to her house every fucking month for this shit. Yeah, Remember? maybe even like every couple weeks. Yeah, so Back we were when like, we were so everyone cool. was just kind of burned out. It's like, we can go to bars now, so let's just go to a fucking bar. Or yeah. so, and then we kept, we were like, fuck it. We went, it was like only 10 people max, but then we were kind of all dead. It was kind of just a quiet night that they expected to be bigger. Mm-hmm. So it was nothing special. So it was like, why did you expect this to be bigger? And we all just kind of sat around and played King's Cup around like midnight. I was going, I think Blake left so, with someone. I think, yeah, it was just a fucking shit night. So. I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I just went and put my shoes on and left. But then as I was leaving, this dude that I've known for a long time who I fucking hate because he stole my DS when we were in grade six. It's a good reason to hate somebody. Yeah. Also because I thought he was my friend. Like, thanks, man. I thought I just lost it. But then it turns out, like 10 years later, another dude who, nice kid, misinformed. <laughs> yeah. Um, He was like, oh, yeah, you know that dude? I'm like, yeah, we used to hang out all the time. He's like, yeah, he stole your DS from you. And I'm like, what? And I was like, that piece of fucking shit. So now whenever I see him, I'm like con- like tempted to just go like, hey man, can I get my fucking DS back? <laughs> <laughs> it had Mario 64 in there. That's the best version of Mario 64. Yeah. Uh, well, th- unless you're a speedrunner, then you want the original version. So you can BLJ. <laughs> well, you can also speedrun the DS version. I don't think... You- well... 
BLJ wasn't in that one. Yeah, but it's a completely different game. It's got more content. It's got different content. Whatever. So fuck that. Fuck that dude. But then I left and then someone called me the next day and they're like, oh yeah, were you, did, did you stay along? And I'm like, no, I left. It, I think it was, it was Blake, but uh, Ryan, Blake's roommate was there. Mm -hmm. But this was before they were made. So whatever. And he were telling me that after I left, asshole set up like he's, he's like a fucking wannabe DJ at the time. He might still be because that's what idiots do. Yeah. And he fucking set up some shit, started to try and DJ. His friends were into it, but everyone else was like, can you just fuck off? Like, can yeah. you guys go? I know we invited you, but you, he, we invited him and he invited like four of his friends. One of his friends had an ugly soul eater tattoo. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> you have shit taste <laughs> in company <laughs> and in fucking tattoos. So I left, and then it turns out around, like, 2, they actually said, like, nah, you know what, it's done. And they're like, come on, we can still go. And then they tried to get him out, and his boy was just like, nah, we're going to stay and party. And she's like, no, this is my house, you're going to leave. And then he's like... I got a gun. No, he, like, flashed it to, to them. fucking stupid. And then they, like, actually got them out, and then he was, like, hanging out outside with, like, still being like, yeah, I got a gun. Like, fucking called the cops on him. Yeah. It's like, you're a fucking idiot. So anyways, don't have a gun, kids. Don't have a gun. Don't also... Or brand- don't, but you know what? Don't have brandish it to people. Have a gun. Be safe. Don't take it to a house party. Yeah. This is a bad place to take a gun. Also, don't choke Good place a- to take a gun? To the government. To <laughs> overthrow them. Good place to take a gun? I don't know, but you shouldn't... Be- open carry should not be a thing. No. Same with concealed carry. Yeah. Honestly. Concealed carry is worse. Don't have a gun on you. Have it yeah, have in it your car. In your car in a locked box. In your Yeah, in a locked glove box or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's wrong. It's not wrong. Uh, so, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I don't know how we got there. Uh, we were talking about the party scene in Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. And then Imagine we about- that happened in Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, that'd be funny. That'd be really dark. He, well, then he would show up at the right moment and be like, Come on, Flash. <laughs> I don't think Flash would be the character that brings a gun. No, Flash is too rich. Flash is a pussy. He's yeah, yeah, he's a pussy, but also he's like rich and people do kind of like him. Yeah. Seems like he has friends. I think he's a rich, he's like a rich liberal, not a rich conservative. He's, his dad's like a doctor, like Yeah. Like he's like he's like, you know. Yeah, um so, I don't know, maybe I'll finish it, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyways, what'd you do this week? Uh, I did not do much this week, because I'm boring. So I basically have, like, two indie games that I played, like, a small amount of. Yeah. Wh- which ones? It Can Fell. Heard about it, never seen it. It's really cool. Just check it out. Eh. I'm Ian. busy with Monster Hunter right now. <laughs> Ian, would you do you like stuff that takes place at a school for magic? No. You don't like that concept at all? Not really. <laughs> Sorry, am I sandballing this right now? You're, yeah, you're sandballing. I don't know, Nathan. It. Maybe it sounds interesting. You just gotta talk about it some more. All right. Well, what if, for example, this magic school story wasn't written by somebody transphobic. Ooh. Ooh. Irregular at a magic high school. You know that for the person who wrote that is transphobic. I don't know if they the... live in Japan, they probably are. Yeah, but uh no, uh essentially, yeah. Ikenfell is about a magic school that happens to also be called Ikenfell, and you play as a character who's going there to search for her sister, who is a witch that goes to the school who has gone missing. Uh and then you learn that you are also capable of doing magic. It has really cool battle system that's kind of like if Mother 3 and Fire Emblem were the same game. <laughs> so it's like Undertale then. No. Because like you know how Fire Emblem, like you need to, it's sort of tactical RPG. You need to pick where you are. It's still turn-based, but you know you have to pick where you are. Yeah. It's like that, but it's like uh, you have like sort of more picks from the menu to choose from. Uh, you have a really you have sort of small party size, and it's like sort of almost a two D viewpoint, like isometric. I no isometric is top down. It looks top down. It's not top down. It's it's flat. It's 
Left, like, right. It's not like this. It's like this. Hmm? I'm sure. watching a trailer right now. Okay, no, I'm talking about the battle system. Because yeah, it looks the... like the, when you're up, it's like that. But when on the battle, it looks like the... Fuck, I missed it. It looks like you're kind of like up at an angle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, so it's it's not it's not like Fire Emblem where it's all top down. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. And also the battles take place in like a singular grid. Yeah. Instead of Fire Emblem where it's like... A giant map. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Also, fuck Fire Emblem. <laughs> hey, Fire Emblem's good. I don't know. I'm, I I like Awakening, and that's about it. You liked Three Houses. No, I didn't. It was on your Goaty list last year. I, had, I didn't play as much. You I don't think it, it was, actually. It was. I don't think so. Or hold on. I think... No. You know what? I said it, and you were like, fuck. I wanted to put that on my... I just forgot that game came out this year. I don't know. I just... <sighs> Looking back on it, I'm not a Fire Emblem fan. I'm a I Fire Emblem Awakening fan. I only liked uh, I only liked Three Houses enough to like actually give a shit. Like Awakening was all right. Yeah, I don't know. With, like the time between shit and like Persona, mm-hmm. I'm like because it's similar and like that you have to use your time well. In Persona, I like it because it's more about improving your own character and getting your stats to be better so that yeah. you can increase your social links with pe- with your friends but in fire emblems it's like three houses specifically it's you either do this thing to make your students better or increase your relationships so that you can get your Eslin cup but it's which not which can make you both perform better and and get sex yeah, I times i don't know i just don't love it hmm. i i liked three houses a lot that's fine you're allowed to. <laughs> Are you going to play the NES one that's coming out for the first time soon? NES one. Yeah. Is there a new one coming out? Is it a remake or is it like a port? A port. It's like $5. Probably not. Because it, it's like we're translating it for the first time, so we actually expect you to pay money for it. I don't know. Maybe if it's $5, then maybe I'll check it out. But yeah. It's coming out, I think, in December. Oh, I'll be busy. Yeah. I'll be busy with other Oh, you mean Yakuza and Cyberpunk and Spider-Man? I'm not playing Sp- Cyberpunk. You're not playing Cyberpunk? No, I'm not interested. Damn. I'll probably wait and we'll, like, check out someone playing it on stream doing like a random side quest thing. I'm interested. I want to play the fucking... Tabletop. I got Yakuza and Spider-Man. Fucking yeah. And also Age of Calamity comes out around then too. Like the Hyrule Warriors oh, game. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it so comes out in November. I, did I fucking... Did I finish that thing about my Discord? I think I got interrupted yeah, by Fashion the only Yeah, you said the only good uh, Zelda games are Ocarina of Time no, and Minish Cap. So that's when we got talking to Hyrule Warriors. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah, Age of Calamity comes out. You guys going to get that? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, someone was saying they'll probably like not get it the day one. And I'm like, I don't know. I was thinking of getting it day one. I'm like, but there's a lot of all the other things coming out. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh I'll probably be busy. And they're like, what, with Cyberpunk? And I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man and Yakuza. Hey man. Then I, Stevie was like, "Oh, you're gonna get it on PS4," and I'm like, "No, <laughs> getting it on PS5 because <laughs> I'll yeah. have one." Hell yeah! Which I think I don't. I he never fucking clarified if he was talking about Spider Man or Yakuza or Yakuza. I feel like Yakuza is the more relevant. It's the one he brought. He might have been talking about, but he just didn't clarify. Maybe Stevie is waiting like I am. No, well, he probably did. Isn't getting a PS5 on launch. Mm. I don't think he would wait, though, because I'll just spoil it for him. <laughs> Stevie, can you believe that Kiryu is dead again? <laughs> no! Uh, but yeah. The like, boy in the main in the game is actually just Nishiki. He went to prison for a different reason. The Nishiki you kill in Yakuza 1 is was fake. a different character. <laughs> it yeah. was his evil stepbrother that looked exactly the same. I'm really pissed off. Because a piece of media about Yakuza 7 made me so fucking mad with the pun that they did that, like, I'm surprised I didn't see this. So you know how his koi on his back yeah. is about to become into a dragon or whatever? It's turning into a dragon? Yeah. Because uh, his goal is sort of to, unlike Kiryu, who kind of was already already proven in his first game, uh, the new character's goal is to prove to himself. Yeah. He wants to become the dragon in his story. So he's having a dragon quest. <laughs> I love it. 
It's good. And he loves Dragon Quest. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. <laughs> the trailer was like, experience your Dragon Quest. Did you see the fucking next gen trailer for it? I did not. Okay, because you, I've already spoiled no, myself no, no. on other things. I'm no. trying not to just so keep so Yakuza myself. Seven had this next gen trailer that was like supposedly talking about like all the features of the next gen version or whatever. It's uh-huh. like it's like experience the and it, but it's like all joke ones. <laughs> it's like it's like next level crab physics and it shows the guy throwing the crab as part of the fucking finishing move. That's like a Saints Row like, Two fucking trailer. Yeah, and then it's like. Uh, it's like th- an unprecedented role-playing experience over the guys wearing the diapers as the babies, uh-huh. like in Yakuza Kiwami 2. Uh, that it's like, fucking, it's, it's so dumb. It's such a good joke. Yeah. Fucking Asian Yakuza is always so fun to, <laughs> funny yeah. to me. Because, like, this game takes place in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that means Kiryu's like 51, but he's still stronger than everyone else. Yeah. Kiryu's 51. Majima and Sajima are like 54. <laughs> yeah, they have to be like f- uh, mid 50s. Yeah, and it's like, God damn. And you're still like, you as this 37 year old is still weaker than them. <laughs> Obviously, well, you were. It's funny. Kiryu leaves prison as ripped as he went in. Yeah. And, I'm, and Kiryu doesn't look like the kind of guy. Like, you gotta eat a lot of meat for that. There's no way they gave him that much food. He just worked out. Yeah. He probably. Kiryu seems like the kind of guy that like really like working out. Well, I mean, you, there's the whole gym side quest in six. Yeah, because he's like that is like the muscle. most fucking bullshit advertising that they've ever done in the series. Oh, that, yeah, that was blatantly for like a gym chain, wasn't it? Yeah. Also, they removed bowling. Yeah, <laughs> the cooler one, and then the gym is gone in Judgment, which yeah. is two years later. The <laughs> and now does that mean canonically VR. that the company failed? That would be funny. <laughs> That would be very funny. Wouldn't that be canonically that the company failed? Yeah. In the in the Yakuza universe, they didn't pay enough for yeah. y- to have Yagami go work out, so now it's uh Yeah. They 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 went under. And judgment because it's not actually like a mainline Yakuza has a different uh brand deal for the whiskey. Really? Yeah, it's Nico whiskey is most of the whiskeys. I guess they're they're Whereas it's Suntory and their thing regular. was probably just that like it has to be in Yakuza games. I wonder if there's Suntory uh, no, whiskey no. in the ones that take place in the past. I, I, what I was going to say is that they were like, they, they, they're char- they probably made, wrote a character reason where it's like, Agami yeah. does not drink Suntory. He likes Nico Nico Knee whiskey or whatever the fuck you said it's it was. Nika. Nika. And then, or maybe Nika's like, we don't want to be in a crime game. And they're like, what about a detective game? And they're like, ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Suntory's, a detective who blatantly breaks the laws. I bet it's just that they have. I bet it's just like they they were like, oh, we can just sign a different contract because we have a contract just for Yakuza games, mm-hmm. and technically Judgment isn't one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, we talked about Yakuza again. <laughs> we always do. It's fun. Yeah. We always come up with some different dumb thing to say about it. Yeah, pretty much. Um. Uh, the uh, do you, do you have anything else before I do my second little indie game thing? I do. Okay. Um, watched a lot of stand up this week. Yeah. Well, I watched two comedians. Okay. I watched all of Dave Chappelle's new stuff. Okay. And um, I think we should just shut up <laughs> about Dave Chappelle's fucking jokes. Yeah. Because the whole so his first stand up, I think it's very good. Yeah. Like his comeback, but he he's he's an old man now. mm Hmm. He's doing less jokes and more humorous lectures. I'm not saying I have a problem with his whole stand-up. I'm saying I have a problem with some of the jokes he does, and I feel like he's just not as good. So that's the thing. That's why I'm. Well, I think he still has some very good jokes. Yeah, it's just I don't think I don't think it's, he's in his prime anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he has he has a process that I mm-hmm. I that he talks about, and he also is in the opening of like Morgan Freeman doing a fucking narration. Yeah. So when he won the Mark Twain Prize, yeah, for literature or whatever the fuck. He they one of the speakers talks about how he does this thing he calls his trance, where he'll just sit there and just kind of like stare at nothing, and just think, mm-hmm. and whatever's on uh, the whatever's floating around in his mind he just like humorously tries to put them together. So because of his shitty trans joke in the first special, mm-hmm. he got a lot of shit on Twitter because he referred to Caitlyn Jenner as her dead name, mm-hmm. and it was. He justifies. He tries to justify why he did that, 
And it was just kind of him being like, I just don't get it. But then because that's all he was thinking about is the flack he got. That's all he wrote about for the next fucking special. Yeah. Where he's just like nothing but trans jokes. Cancel culture, cancel culture, boo, boo, boo. He has a good cancel my, culture one on my his friend, newest one. My friend Louis C.K. is only working clubs nowadays. No, he he kind of talks shit about Louis. He says me and Louis were born when uh, he talks about in one where the people were coming up to him. He's like, oh, did you know? And he's like, no, didn't fucking know. He, Louis didn't walk in and be like, yeah, so I brought this girl back to my place and I jerked off in the corner while she was watching. Mm-hmm. Like they don't talk. He's like, we don't, they weren't that level of friendship they were like work yeah. buddies but he doesn't have a problem with cancel culture he has a problem with the people trying to cancel him over minor things but because everyone gave him shit for the fucking Caitlyn Jenner comments in the first one the second one was nothing but shitty anti-trans people jokes and I'm like god Dave relax this is not funny then his third one was funny <laughs> Because yeah. he doesn't bring it up once. It's just him talking. He tells this story about how he was walking around the street, like, uh, down, like around his rural Ohio town he lives in, with his sister. And his sister's, like, full-on Muslim. Mm-hmm. So someone throws, like, a snowball at them. It was, yeah. like, winter. And so, he, and so he's, like, pissed. Like, they hit him, but I think he's, like, they were aiming for his sister. Yeah. So he goes up to the car, puts his hand on the top of the car, and, like, stares through the window. He's like, hey, can you come out? I just want to talk to you for a second. Just re- just want to talk to you. And he says, by the way, <laughs> if a black man <laughs> comes up to you and very politely asks you to step out of your car, don't do it. Because that man will fuck you up. How do I know this? Because I was about to fuck that kid up. <laughs> And then the guy in the back seat opens up the window and he's like, we got nothing to say to you, N-word, and whips a snowball at his chest. And then he turns around to his sister and she's like, has her phone in her hand and she does this. And he's like, we got the fucking license plates. And he's like, because before, yeah. a snowball, it's nothing. It's like a fucking slap on the wrist. Like, hey, yeah. don't do that. But because he called him the N-word, it is now a hate crime. <laughs> So, and then they were, like, preparing to go down to the police station and, like, give their shit. And, like, this old white man walks in. He's like, I saw that. I did not like that at all. Yeah. And it's just him going, like, yeah, racism is still out there, but not everyone's evil. Yeah. And so he took, like, the, he was, like, he says, I'm, like, the fucking Pied Piper going down the road with all these white people behind me to the police station. And two black people walk in with all these white people ready to give a statement about racism. <laughs> and then he talks. He, he, they got the kid. He talked to the kid's mom. Yeah. And then he says something offensive after that, where he's like, I won't press charges of your son if you suck my dick. And it's like, obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. So he's got like very funny stuff he still does. It's just sometimes he gets too focused on something that he probably shouldn't talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I thought overall, other than that one special, yeah, they're all still pretty good. They're not as good as his old shit. His old shit's way better. Yeah. Like live at the Fillmore is amazing. Yeah. Because it has the fucking one where he's... <laughs> I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it either. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, is that the jerk off dude on the bus? Yeah. Okay, we were going the same one, but I was going to be like, rush him. He can't come on all of us. <laughs> That's, a, That's my favorite. That's that is the story. <laughs> the best one. And then I watched all of Burt Kreischer's stand-up specials. I don't know who that is. That man is hilarious. He is like this dude in his mid-40s. He is the basis for National Lampoon's Van Wilder. Really? Yeah. Like, actually. He's, a, like, he went to Florida State, which in, like, 97 was, like, ranked the number one party school in the USA. Why is it every photo of this man having a shirt on? Because that's his thing. When he gets up on stage, he's always wearing this gray, like, V-neck, and then he rips it off immediately. And he does his whole stand-up just shirtless. And he kind of just talks about, like, being, like, a shitty dad. Like, he tries, but he's just not good at being a parent. Like, one of his bits is just him talking about his... he. They had to get, like, a safe word for, yeah. like, the kids. For, oh, I've seen that on uh, TikTok, people. Yeah, yeah, where it's like, uh, his his oldest daughter's like, how about motherfucker? And it's like, no, no, <laughs> no child predator is going to pull up to a kid and be like, hey, your parents sent me. They said to, cu- to call you a motherfucker. And they're like, okay. <laughs> So then he tells the whole story about how, like, a guy who's known them for their entire life 
pulls up and he's like, hey, Georgia, hey, Isla, I'm here to pick you up. And Isla pop, hops in. But then he says, like, like she's just ready to be raped. And then I'm like, God, Bert, that's fucked up to say about your kid. But then Georgia's standing there. He's like, say the safe word. <laughs> and there's like a bunch of teachers around. He's like, Georgia, I don't want to say the word. It's very filthy. <laughs> and she's like, I'm not getting in until you say the safe word. And he goes like, fine. Motherfucker. And she's like, I didn't hear you. Motherfucker. And she's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's got like a bunch of dumb, like his whole thing. And he tells the story about how he gets, he became the machine, which is how he got involved with the Russian mafia. And I'm not going to fucking repeat it because honestly, you don't have to watch all the specials. Just watch the machine bit because it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's the fucking, the reason why Van Wilder is a character is because of a piece they Yo, wrote they about him. ripped him off for it, eh? Yeah, well. Because he wrote, there was supposed to be a thing, uh, like, it was supposed to be a movie that he was part of, but then someone just ripped him off. Yeah, well, it's like they took the original idea around to people and they were like, we don't want it. Yeah. And then the one of the co-writers took it and just rewrote, like, changed the names and shit. Yeah. And then they were like, all right, let's make this movie without yeah. the other people originally involved. Burt Kreischer doesn't care. Yeah. He literally, he said in, in an interview where they're, he I was think. like, I wouldn't sue them. He's like, I don't care. He's like, it's so long ago. And also, his, it's not like his career went down. He's dude had three TV shows. Yeah. He's got a fourth right now on Netflix. It called, it's, it's because he's like a workaholic. Because mm-hmm. he does not, he does touring stand-up all the time. And he, um, he does a bunch of podcasts. Like, he's always working. So he made a show where the whole idea was he was supposed to go up and, like, live in a cabin cabin in Northern California. Yeah. And just chill out and not do anything exhausting. And he immediately turned around and was like, I'm going to invite two comedian friends every episode. And we're going to do something that's supposed to be rea- relaxing, but it, we're going to make it funny. So the first episode is Tom Segura and Joey Diaz. Yeah. And listening to Joey Diaz talk is just funny in itself. Because he's like an old Cuban man just telling stories. And he's like, he's just very funny. It's yeah. him. They're hanging out. They eat like ostrich leg. <laughs> uh, they fuck up butchering it. Uh, but then the next episode just starts and it's like him trying to fucking like wax his ass. <laughs> but the guests on that one were uh, Nikki Glazer, Yeah. And Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, she's sick. Yeah. She's She's kind of like Caitlyn Jenner was yeah. kind of entertaining to watch, but I'm just like eh. I just like I like I like Nikki Glaser. Nikki Glaser was the reason why she was entertaining, but I was just kind of like I like Nikki Glaser. I think she's really funny. Yeah, but it's just I like, liked her show. When Caitlyn she Jenner is not a comedian. No, she's not. She's yeah. just like a rich she's person a personality. Yeah, I, she's not even famous for what she was. Fam- Actually, she was a uh, an athlete, it's, right? Yeah, like a swimmer or something. I'm thinking of Robert Kardashian. No, no, Robert- he, no, no, no. I know, but I was thinking like, oh, he was a lawyer, and I'm like, no, that's Robert Kardashian. Yeah. Chris Jenner was just, yeah, sorry, it's Bruce, Bruce Jenner. It was Bruce, but now, now it's Caitlin. Caitlin. My bad. It's all good. Oh, he tells a story about how he, he, the what, how, how she chose chose her name. Yeah, and it was just that she was talking to her assistant before she was like going for the transition. Yeah, and they she was like I'm between these names, and it's like blah blah blah, Caitlyn. And her assistant's like, I really like the name Caitlyn. And and she was like, she was like, yeah, fuck it, that sounds good. And she's like, but it's spelled like this, and it's how it's spelled, which yeah. is like C A I T L Y N. Yeah, and she's like sick. So when she told Kim, Kim's like, oh great, you're gonna stay with the K's. <laughs> and uh, and he's, and she's just like, no no no, this is for me. <laughs> Dumb bullshit. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's funny. Um, that was like the one funny thing sh- uh, she said, but the rest of it's just like... Eh. Nikki Glaser's great, though. Yeah, like, Nikki Glaser was Did you great. ever watch her old show, Not Safe? No, I didn't. I used to watch that show all the fucking time when it, new episodes came out. One of the funniest things fucking Comedy Central ever did, and it had the funniest fucking bit I've ever seen on a television serial. Yeah. Which is... Um, one of the bits that they did was they had they'd have comedians go out... To a porn taping where the where the oh, stars were wearing ear, little I've earwigs. That, yeah. I think I made you watch it. She, well, no, she did it with Kyle Kinane, and I saw that. Yeah, she also did one with uh, oh, who's the girl? Kristen Shaw. Mm-hmm. Um, really funny. Uh, but yeah, it's just like they have like they're wearing earpieces, the porn stars or whatever, and they're feeding them lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was so funny. Yeah. And then they just watch them make porn. Yeah, they're just like watching the sex happen, and then they're like. 
da 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 and like or like say like this or it's so funny yeah it's like all like unsexy sexy things yeah you it's like all like my weird big shit meat tube inside your yeah. sausage canal yeah it's like oh that's gross uh or like uh, there were so many funny ones like one of them they made like a weird story about it like where it was like this is <laughs> i think there was one where there was like supposed to be one where it's like a, a workplace one yeah and they made it like <laughs> talking about how like it's wrong to fucking do that <laughs> like, like i can't do this you're my boss well don't worry we can fire file the forms i can like i need like it's so fucking funny yeah, um, some female comedians are good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some women are good. Just like how some men are good. It's the same. <laughs> Everyone has their own thing of comedy they like. Personally, if you're thing. being gross, I don't like you. Uh, I don't mind gross shit. Depends on the gross shit. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I really don't like. I get it why it makes a bit. It is, I just feel like it's only funny to women. Actually, I feel like it's only funny to the gender who the person is making the joke when they're like, "My genitals are so gross." Imagine someone else dealing with this, and it's like, "Ha, ah, so funny." Oh, my vagina looks weird. My dick looks like a fucking horn. Who cares? It's, I don't know. It's a little funny. Like once, but then like so many comedians do it. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like every male comedian's made the joke, and, like, every female comedian's made the joke. It's like, we get it. They're weird. It's about it. Unless you have something unique about your dick or vagina, I don't want to hear it. Like, if if it, <laughs> if your dick fucking, uh, like, or vagina shocks the other person, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, what I'm getting at is women aren't funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a joke. Women are very funny. Yeah. Women are funnier than us. If you're a woman, <laughs> would you like to come on this podcast? Don't say that. Your mom just walked down. She uh, might take it as an invite. No. Uh, I also played the game Going Under this week. Is that about going to Australia? No. It's about... Uh, it's about. It's like a roguelike dungeon crawler action game about... Hum- what? Roguelikes? What? <laughs> Gross. The worst kind of games. No, but this one's cool. It's like 3D graphics. I'm also not joking. I like roguelikes. Yeah. Is that the one where you're like working in an office? Yeah, it's like a commentary on tech startups. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's it, funny. It gave a bunch of people existential nightmares. The, 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 it's a funny game. Yeah, it's got a uh, 9 out of 10 on Steam. Yeah, the game is weird because Steam doesn't funny. have ratings like that. It does. 9 out of 10? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Steam's is just positive or very positive. Or, well, there's negative mixed and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But also, I think like they they also average out reviews. Maybe Metacritic gave an 80 percent. Actually, no. I think you if you're a curator, you can actually give it a review, mm. like a out of ten review. So yeah, so maybe it's got an average of nine yeah. on Steam. Metacritic, it's got an average of eight because I guess people who write game reviews are more. I'm sure someone just didn't get it, or they gave it to someone who, who gave it like a two star, two out of five, or whatever. That was just like, I don't get the game. Roguelikes are dumb. Let me just go and finish it. Yeah, or maybe like a tech bro. Yeah, played it and was like, I don't like this commentary. And I've never worked in a startup. <laughs> yeah, or they they had or they they are the kind of person who wants. They were to the run startup. <laughs> yeah. No, did you beat it? No, I didn't. Oh my god! I'm nowhere near beating it. Pathetic. I don't think I'm gonna play it that much more. That's it's like, like me cool. With Hades. <laughs> that's much. That's like that's like it's a cool game. Everyone in my fucking Discord's like, yeah, I beat Hades like 50 times, and I'm sitting there like, all right, I guess I'll go fuck myself. I haven't played it like 50 times, but I don't I don't know if it's one that I'm gonna keep coming back to. But I think it's a fun little game. I've played. I was on like my 30th run last time I saw, and I was talking to fucking like two people last night and they were just like yeah i beat it around my 20th run and like oh fuck me then that's how i felt about enter the gungeon i beat it once and i didn't even like kill fire the bullet that killed time or whatever yeah uh and didn't even do it once but i've died in that game like three four hundred times or some shit by now but like uh i still think gungeon's great yeah i don't know i like <laughs> i like bull- bullets per minute that was a good one yeah. It became a good one when I fucked with the settings. <laughs> um, 
And also, you get used to that fucking saturation. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited because, like, a game that I'm... Yep. House Party. What? That fuck... Or no, not House Party. That's the porn game. Uh, After Party. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that came out. Yeah, that came out a year ago. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. You sure? Yeah, it was an Epic Game Store exclusive. It came out a full oh, year Oh, so now it's on Steam. That's oh. why I thought it was new. <laughs> yeah, I played, yeah, After Party, I played that game when it came out. Oh, it was okay, because I remember you talking about it a long time ago, and I thought it was just in development hell no, for a long time. I think I, ta- I was talking about the fact that I played it. Yeah, but that was a year ago. <laughs> yeah, like uh, it came out in October last year, yeah. Yeah, okay. That game's cool. It's yeah, funny. I don't, I don't want, I'm not getting it. <laughs> All right. Um, but no, but what I was going to say was uh, uh, Ghost Runner comes out in a yeah. couple days, and that looks great. I played the demo on Steam, and I bought, I pre-ordered it on PS4. The Did you game. play it after I told you about it? Or? No, I uh, I talked about the demo to you on the podcast. Are you sure? Yeah. I feel like it's one of those things where you told me about it, and I completely forgot, and then I was yeah. on Steam, and I was like, that game? <laughs> yeah. And when I looked, I'm like, this is cool, and then I pre-ordered it after I beat it. Yeah. And then I went through and did it again and beat all of Chris's times. I didn't. I played through the demo a couple times, but that was I played the demo like ages ago, like I want to say like March. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And then I saw a Funhouse video about speedrunning the demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. I just kind of bought it. Yeah. Yeah. I I like the game a lot. It's cool, and uh, you should check it out. It comes out in like four days. Yeah. Which means by the time you're listening to this, it comes out in two days. By the time... Or tomorrow. By the next week. I've beaten it. <laughs> Probably not, actually. I don't know how long that game uh, who is. Who knows? Yeah. It's cool. I hope... I hope I'm, I'm really I excited. I kind of hope there's something to deflect bullets back. Yeah. Yeah. Or... Because I just feel like it's going to become... I just... I'm just waiting for that game to be playable on a controller yeah because <laughs> on on pc the controller support was really bad and the control scheme was fucking terrible what was it uh it was like was r1 attack <laughs> no well that's f- fine in fucking 3d ian uh because shooting in in first sorry first person rather first person you shoot with uh, oh you don't R2. shoot in ghost runner <laughs> well no but it's like you know, in Mirror's Edge, you punch with R2 or whatever. Like, it's like, who cares? Okay, go on. But, um, anyway, it was like, it was just really fucking weird. Like, I think, I think I had it, I think it was set up in a way where it was like, click the right stick to fucking do the dodge move or something, or click the left stick to do the dodge move or something. Like your dash? Yeah. Oh, that's weird. I would have just put it on L2 like a normal fucking person. It just wasn't. Like, it just... And then I couldn't change it, or I couldn't oh. figure out how to change it. That's weird. Hopefully there's rebindable stuff. On the PS4, there usually is. Well, I would say it's more likely for it to be on PC, but normally they just do let you rebind things now. Yeah. I, or I bet that that was, like, a sort of Steam decided which buttons do what for some reason. I don't think shift, so. Hold on. Here's why I think so. Because shift is the fucking dash. Oh, okay, yeah. And then and then on my controller it was click L L three. Yeah, okay. and it was a demo, so I'm like, maybe and Steam was. Was trying there to an option for gamepad? I don't remember. Because I don't think so. Because when you plug in a controller, sometimes on Steam it just says like in the bottom right, it's like loading in this sort of thing. Like when I do Monster Hunter, it's like, oh, here's the controls for fucking. Most other third person games that work like this. Yeah. And I think um I think Disco Elysium's coming out on console soon. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> you should check it out, Ian. No, I'm not going to. Why? Because I don't want to. Why? Because I don't want to. Do you not like good games? Yeah, that's it. Okay. I want to know what kind of cop you are, Ian. Uh um uh, asshole cop. I'm going to role play as a real cop. I'm going to find out everything about you myself. You can do that. And I'm going to go beat my wife. You do realize you can do that. Yeah. But then I'm going to go hit my wife because 40%. Are you going to drink and do drugs or no? Or are you? Yeah, I'm cop? a cop. Okay. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic drug user who goes and beats up alcoholic drug users. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, it's a cool game. Uh, but yeah, going under. Yeah. I don't know. Check it out if you want. Whatever. Who cares? And you have anything else for me? I don't know. I played a lot of Monster Hunter and Genshin Impact. Man, I deleted Genshin Impact. Yeah? It's boring. I don't think so. 
I don't know. Like, it's fine, but, like, it's still kind of boring. It's very... It's There's too much, like, pot stoppage of my progression. Like, I went for, like, a fucking week not doing a single mission quest because I didn't have any quests, and all I could get XP was from was, like, by doing my fucking dailies. So I just had to do that shit. And now I can't get I can't get any more handbook XP until I get to level 30. Yeah. So I have a whole nother fucking level I got to go through. Yeah, it's just like I f- I don't love the like the combat's all right, but I don't love it. Um the combat's is near automata. It's not near automata. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No. Mm-hmm. Near Automata, you have way more weapon variety. You got way better. It's way more fucking fluid. What weapon variety? In Near Automata? You got sword. Yeah. Big sword. Yeah. Pole arm. Yeah. Fist weapon. Yeah. And you do realize that most. For- am I forgetting one? Actually, I'm not. I'm serious. Uh. Yeah, like uh, like clubs and hammers and shit. That's just in big what sword. No, no, no. It's different move set. They have the same move set. Different move set. Okay, fine. So and a lot of clubs. different swords have different move sets too. Yeah, even if they're and different when I, sizes. And when I'm playing as the main character, who uses a one-handed sword, she doesn't have the same move set as the fucking uh, a boy with an eye patch that uses a one-handed sword. The characters are just swords. Yeah, it's just it's less fluid, I guess, because Nier Automata is way more fluid. Because you can press square and then triangle to go through your attacks. Well, no, but I mean, like, even the animations and the speed and, like, it it flows better, even. Also, Nier Automata doesn't have a fucking stamina bar. (laughs) Yeah, and good frame rate. (laughs) The game has fine frame rate for me. I'm playing on my base PS4. It's like kind. Of, it's thirty. Apparently, it's kind of bad on PS4. Yeah, it's like thirty to. Tw- it's twenty sometimes. Yeah. Also, once again, the only platform that doesn't cross platform. Yeah. When you have the game on PC, I could open it up on my phone I, right now. So and I, I could, downloaded it on PC. But I'm saying I can open it up on my phone and I can open it up on my Switch. But like PS4. Uh, so still, I no. I downloaded it on my PC to try it first, and I could get it to launch at all. Weird. Like, you know how it's like, you know how MMOs have that screen where it's like, it'll usually launch into a screen and then, like, there's a button to actually play the game? Yeah. There was no button to actually, like, play the game. It has to load. It goes there and then there's a loading bar at the bottom. Um, And then it says click to begin. hmm. So you didn't let it load and just assumed it wasn't going to. It didn't, I didn't see any bar. It's at the bottom. Yeah, I didn't see it. Well... That's anyway, fault, I deleted buddy. it, and That's then I fine. deleted it off my PS4 because after putting a few hours into it. It's a fucking. Uh, it's there to steal your money. Yeah, it's, I don't. It's like I don't care about the world. I don't care about the story. It's just something to do for me. Like I don't. I don't really yeah. care about the story. Well, either. Do you know what I do when I just need something to do? Is I'll for hours listen to a podcast and play Tony Hawk online. Uh, I don't care to play Tony Hawk online, and I just play Monster Hunter instead. Mm. I beat that fucking monster I was complaining about weeks ago. Uh, the Beasel Geese? No. You're right. That dude does suck, but it wasn't him. Uh, the new guy. Uh, no, the new the guy before the new guy, Alatrion. Uh. He has a he has a uh, a skill check that I don't like because I don't have that skill. <laughs> you have to like fucking do enough elemental damage to knock him down, and if you don't, he does this big AOE move that you literally can't stop from killing you. And if you don't know, if you knock, so you and your boys finally beat him. Oh, I've done it. I did it with randoms online. Damn. Uh, And I've been still trying because his armor is the strongest armor in the game right now. It has natively plus six attack boost, which the max attack boost you can get is seven. mm -hmm. It's got like a bunch of slots so I can add in new skills. It has health boost level threes, which you kind of need in master rank. Yeah. And so when defense. you have to fight against your your new boy, or have you fought him too? I haven't fought him yet because I'm actually saving that one for me and Anthony. But I need we need this armor set, and you need one of the weapons because it's the the new monster is weak to dra- the dragon element. Yeah, and this guy has the strongest dragon weapons in the game. So I have to fucking get the dra- a dragon weapon from him and the full suit of armor. That sucks. So, but even like playing with experienced people right now it's still like and because you can just go and into their server browser and just filter it so it's like 
only find servers where people are trying to fight Alatreon. And there's like usually three going on. One with one person where it's like, buddy, you should probably go search for it yourself. Yeah. And one that has like four. And since there's only four people that can join a quest, I'm like, I'm not going to join that one because then I'm by myself. Mm. And then there's one where it's like 12 to 14 people. So, so I joined that. But then it's all people who are like okay at the game, not great. And then it's fucking frustrating because you need an ice or a fire weapon to fight this dude. Yeah. And I kept getting into games with people who had like the wrong one on. And it's like, oh. just fucking switch. <laughs> it doesn't change between quests. Like for for the assignment you get to fight him, he always starts fire so you bring an ice. Mm. But on the event one, it changes week to week. So right now he starts ice so you need to bring a fire weapon and i didn't know that the first time but then after that i went and brought a fire weapon and now i keep seeing people bring like here's my dragon weapon it's like you're fucking useless to me (laughs) yeah if you don't do enough of the element damage to him he's just gonna kill us all and it's literally if you one person dies the quest is pretty much a failure so it's a rough fight (laughs) And I wish my friends were good enough that I could actually get them on to do it, but one of them doesn't have the DLC right now because he played it on PS4 because he got a PC like Damn. a couple months ago, so he doesn't have Iceborne. So, and he's the one who like, oh, I think he would actually be a good help. What are you looking at over there? Uh, Twitter. Anything interesting? Uh, not really. Damn. Well, anyways, that's all I got. Sick. Uh, I, I watched a little bit of this War in the Pocket. I didn't finish it, so I'm not going to go into extreme details. <laughs> but it's cool. Cool. So preview for next week. Yeah. Uh, it's six short episodes. I was just feeling depressed all week. but nice. uh, <laughs> So I Sick. didn't watch any shows. That's me this week as well. Because <laughs> um, working after new shifts sucks. Sure does. Uh, but if if you're interested in Gundam War for the Pocket or War in the Pocket rather, um, it's really cool. It's kind of what Gundam in my books should be. Yeah. Because it's like the story is like about a kid who like loves mobile suits and thinks they're really cool. I gotta pee really bad. That's why I'm kidding. Okay. He loves mobile suits and thinks they're really cool. Uh, and then he sort of winds up having war happen in his hometown and being somewhat involved with the people that are involved in the war and learning about how actually fucked up it is, which is, like, key. And it's also six regular length episodes, so it's not even super long. So anyways, is that kind of like that show they made, like, Gundam Builders or whatever, where the mom was just painfully thick? Uh, no, it's completely different. Uh, this show takes place in the actual Gundam like mainline universe. It's just taking place like during classic Gundam, but just like when they were like, just it's cool to look like big robots. What do you mean military and government corruption? Yeah, like it's like oh, war's bad and people die in it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so it's it's really but like cool. Gundam Build Fighters or whatever the fuck it was called, where it's the, like this is a children's card game. The Gundam, yeah. There's the the Gundam Build shows all take place in the same universe uh there was two seasons of build fighters which is like it's just pokemon with gundams uh where they you just make them fight and like the point is that there's a guy who's really good at fighting gundams who's dumb and bullshit at building them (laughs) and one who's great at building them but dumb and bullshit at fighting them and they team up oh nice uh that's Gundam Build it's like Fighters. like how Tight Kubo should be doing manga. Yeah. <laughs> really good art, bad writing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the follow-up to Gundam Build Fighters is Gundam Build Divers, which is the same thing. Well, not like different characters, because it takes place like 300 years in the future. Mm. Um, but it's the same t- kind of show, except it takes place in a VR MMO. God, you know it would be sick? You just made me think about it. Like, I was gonna you say, didn't like, even react to it takes place in a VR MMO. Either. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I didn't react to it because I was. I think I blanked it out. But did the characters that take place 300 years in the future, do they just look like the characters from 300 years in the past? I don't think they're at all related. Because that's how fucking Demon Slayer ends. <laughs> it's like 100 years later and every character you see is like the grandchild of one of these other characters. But they just look the same as the other characters. And it could be like... It's like Boruto. 
Boruto is Naruto's kid, though. Like, he of course, looks just like him. No, he actually doesn't. Boruto has a much more like angular face. Does Boruto's dad look like Boruto's dad? Like, does Boruto's dad's dad look like Boruto's dad? No, no, not as much. I would say in the if blonde hair, blue eyes, yes. No, I'm saying looks this. You know how Boruto just looks a lot like almost identical to Naruto, just slightly newer, slightly newer looking, like slightly different. He's got the more like his face is different, but it's close because it's his fucking kid. Yeah, but like they have the same haircut. No, not really. They have the same stupid whiskers. This was Naruto's dad. Naruto's dad doesn't look anything like Boruto's Naruto. Dad. Looks like his mom, except with his mom has red hair. They got like the same face shape. Yeah. Yeah. Except she had red hair and it's straight. And people Did you read the new it. thing by the Naruto guy? Samurai 8 or whatever? Yeah. No. No? Got canceled. <laughs> oh. It got canceled. What's that guy's name? Is it Kobayashi? Ma- no, Masashi Kishimoto. Kishimoto, that's it. Yeah. Good writer sometimes. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> He's a better would... writer than fucking Tai Kubo and he went more for... Um, trying to do like the yeah he's a better writer than Tite Kubo but he's a worse artist but I don't think he's a great I don't think he's a great I think his writer. art's pretty good I think he got I think just like who like it's just the same with every single artist it's like he got tired and also if you like a fucking eye patch I'm just gonna repeat eye patch wolf shit cause he watched like he watched he did like the Naruto video yeah where at the end he just kinda says beginning of Naruto looks like this ending of Naruto looks very streamlined to the point where everyone's wearing the same outfit except for Naruto and Sasuke. Yeah. So, and also the character design looks a little more similar to Ikemoto's designs. The guy... Who, who is the Boruto guy. The Boruto guy. But also, the mine it kind of feels like a pedophile with the way he writes certain characters. And also doesn't, like... Whatever. Uh, we don't Sakura and about. Sasuke's kid <laughs> doesn't behave like Sakura or Sasuke. Yeah. Like, Boruto kind of has, like, the same thing as his dad, where he's, like, a brash, loud idiot. Mm-hmm. But he's also very smart, because his parent he actually had two parents around who were able to teach him. But in the anime, Sarada, Sakura and uh, Sasuke's kid, is, like, this cool, smart kid, which is, like, what Sasuke was. Yeah. But then in the manga, she's like, hey, 30-year-old man, bet you went up in this 12-year-old pussy. And I'm like, why... Is this character behaving like this? Also, she's wearing, like, this high-collared shirt. You can see she has, like, wraps under her chest, like, underneath. As, yeah. like, it's like, ooh, I uh, think I know that's, that it's playing. Like, it's really open on the side. Mm-hmm. And then she's wearing, like, a skirt and ninja high heels. Which some of the women in Naruto have worn heeled sandals. Mm-hmm. But they're never, like, as high as those are. They look like... An inch or two. So lift. she's over sexualized. She's over sexualized and she's 12. Yeah. So, like, talk shit on Kishimoto all you want, but he never showed you child that Sakura much. or child Eno and who Eno turned into, like, the hottest chick in the world. Yeah. Or child Hinata. That he was never like, look at these children. Aren't they hot? <laughs> he was like, look at these children. Isn't it fucked up that they're 12 years old fighting and murdering people? Yeah. And I will say. Do you know whose art doesn't get worse over the course of the stuff they make? <laughs> Ichirio Oda. <laughs> no, that's no. his art. His art's not worse, but his character design is. I was going to say Araki. You're right. It's gotten better. Yeah. Much better. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Ur- uh, Naoki Urasawa. Who's that? The guy who did Monster and 20th Century Boys. Okay. His stuff stays consistent throughout the whole run. I was fucking run. driving home from work last night, and just this pops up every once in a while. Where I just in the in my head, I'm just like, God, I want part seven JoJo animated. Yeah, I just want True Man's World. I just want to see that animated. I want to see the parts that I haven't read yet, because like I didn't what, read like all eight? of part seven. Oh, okay. I just think True Man's World is fucking cool, and that whole like there's like a whole chapter. I want to see the fucking dinosaur part. That would be sick. Scary the, monsters. The town the, yeah. where it's in the whole town and they all get fucked up by monsters. Also where that becomes Dio stand, despite the fact that it's not Dio stand. 
Well, he takes it from the guy. Yeah. Which is weird, though, because it's not like someone else had Tusk before Johnny. Johnny Maybe they t- did. Johnny takes a piece of the uh, of the holy corpse or whatever the fuck they call it. Yeah. Into himself that someone else already had. And that gives him his stand. And then when he loses the corpse pieces at towards the end, he still has Tusk. Hmm. I don't know. Who it's it's JoJo. It's not meant to be consistent or make sense. Yeah, I think. Well, I think it's that it's not. I don't think it's an Iraqi forgot. I think I think it's a, an Iraqi retcon thing. Because yeah. then also, Funny Valentine doesn't have. He said first it was the corpse parts give you a stand, and then he very quickly changed it to if you end up in this area called the Devil's Palm. Yeah, you get a stand while you're there, and that's how Funny Valentine got his, and that's also how the guy who could run very fast. Uh, oh, no, not or hey. no. Um, uh, the, the, the dude who has Heya. Oh yeah, yeah. The hey. most powerful stand in hey, the uh, goddamn universe. I forget what that guy's name is. I can't remember either, but it was a character of a of a black man. So. Yeah, I know, the black guy. <laughs> well, it was it was like it was definitely. But there like, was the native guy too. Yeah, I don't. I can't remember. He had a stand, but his power was also that he can just run very fast because he figured out how to do that thing where he's like. As soon as his leg touches the ground, he moves it in the specific way where he can like keep the force. He was running as fast as a horse. Yeah, like the, the I forget what that guy's called even. But again, are you excited for CG horses? Oh god, it would be CG horses, wouldn't it? It would, of course, it would. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. In Gundam: The Origin, they have CG. All the Gundams are CG. There's a lot of CG, and they're used really in good. Modern anime now, like uh, a lot of Demon Slayer has a yeah. lot of CG, and it looks really good. It's just do you do it well? That's yeah. about it. <laughs> Again, are we Sunrise and is it Gundam and we can make we can make six episodes ha- come out over the course of four years? Yeah, of course everything's going to be super polished. Did David Productions do the openings or did someone else do that? Somebody else. Mm. It was it's um uh Kamikaze Doza Doga. Well, hopefully, who do hold on? If you want to know who does the the three D CG openings, it's the same animation company that did Pop Team Epic. And they also did Batman Ninja, the movie you did not want to watch, even though it's great. Still don't want to watch it. It's oh, really fucking Pop Team good. Pop Epic's sick, though. Yeah. <laughs> Batman Ninja's great. I love the concept of Pop Team Epic, though. Yeah. Where they were like, you, here's a 24 episode. Here's 12 episodes, yeah. 24 minute slots. And they're like, oh, shit. We, we repeat ooh. the same episode twice in the slot. With different with voice slight, actors. With different voice actors and slight differences. Or the, also where they created their own new jokes because they... <laughs> <laughs> the untranslated Japanese panels yeah. to their French de- developer that they That's spoke so to in English. Yeah. Because that they both, the Japanese team knew English well, and, the, the, and the French guy knew English. But there was like parts of it that are entirely in French. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Those, the yeah. parts he animated. They, and then they put Japanese subtitles only the second time they show it. Yeah. Uh, but then also it's not, uh, <laughs> that fucking grape one <laughs> is so funny. <laughs> It's the one where it's like um, shorter one, blonde one. Yeah. It's like at the window going like, oh, fucking. The oh, the grape juice. The we gra- did this, this on an episode. It's so fragrant. It's great. And then it goes to Papako and she's just like, can you finish your grape tree, your grape juice so we can go out? Yeah. And then she turns around like. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I really wish they animated the one where it's like small one goes to large one and yeah. says you want to see my fucking uh, my baby book like you know pictures yeah. of when they're a child and every single picture has her running at the camera <laughs> that's really funny it's like, she's fucking it's like as a baby it's the first one is her going like this like crawling towards the camera yeah. and then it's like as she's older <laughs> it's like this every time uh, that was good the fucking It's like that fucking meme of like the guy walking into the center frame and it says, You think you're safe? And then it starts running at the camera. <laughs> uh, uh yeah. The the there was the wacky races episode was really funny. Uh the one uh the one with the fucking where Papako or whatever it is is like M. Bison with like the <laughs> the fucking like the idol empire of cloned yeah. the other one. Because she made that, like, shitty dance or something. Yeah, it was so dumb. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, I think we've gone super long on this. (sighs) That was a fucking... God, that's a good show. Uh, So, thank you so much for listening to the Media Hole Podcast. If you want to follow me, or if you want to see more of us, youtube.com slash n8scomedy. 
Uh, if you want to uh, see more of me on social medias, I'm at the Media Hole on Twitter, at the Media Hole on TikTok, twitch.tv slash the Media Hole, and when your balls get stuck to your leg, that's humble.com. Change your name. <laughs> and uh, if you want to follow Ian and see how much he tweets about, uh, you know, how... How women aren't funny in comedy. How women aren't funny and how streamers should pay licensing fees for their games. And female streamers also should all... They should pay double. They should pay double. Yeah. They should also go... <laughs> also... <laughs> they should go back to their plastic surgeon and pay them every time they show up on camera. Go to any website and look up Struggles V. And that's where you can find them. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening, y'all. Bye. <laughs> Fuck, I hate that one. <laughs>